Misfit Toys. Hey guys, what's happening? Uh, coming in hot here before the show starts because I received some information that I would have talked about in the show, but the show is already put to bed. So here we are doing it now as a bit of a preamble. Uh, I'll give you a little backstory here. In, in 1993, when I moved back from Los Angeles to Chicago and I was starting to do stand-up comedy in earnest, uh, I wanted to do road work, you know, all through the Midwest. But in Chicago... Uh, I worked mainly at the Funny Bone in Naperville because one time I went in there to showcase and uh, the guy managing it at the time was a guy named Bert Borth and he, for some reason, dug me and he said, you want to MC?" And he gave me like all the MC dates. So when I wasn't on the road traveling, Bert was having me there at the club and it really helped me grow as a performer and it gave me kind of this whole new family. I mean, I had just moved to town. And I wound up hanging out at the club and I wound up hanging out with Bert and I wound up hanging out with Bert's wife, Janet. And then his daughters were super young at the time. And uh, my friend Catherine worked in the box office. Mike uh, and Robert worked. I just I got along with all the bartenders. I got along with the 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 staff. It was really just a great time in my life. And I became great friends with Bert and Janet, spent holidays with them, would see them then. Uh, And also there was this very special time when you're a comedian. Um, You probably you have the same thing when you're done with work. Okay, when the shows are over, uh, the wait staff was tabulating their checks and everybody's cleaning glasses and getting the bar scooped out and and uh, Janet would show up and, you know, people would have a beer and we'd laugh and we'd get a pizza or whatever. We'd hang out and we'd bond and we'd commiserate and we'd just get to be even greater friends. It was just a, a terrific atmosphere. Well, um, I'm here to tell you that my friend Janet has unfortunately uh, run afoul of some medical problems. She has cancer. And, and as I always tell you, you know, basically cancer and heart disease and diabetes are out there just Rochambeauing, waiting to get their fucking hands on us. And uh, in Janet's case, cancer won. But now cancer is going to fucking lose because we're going to step up. Her friends are stepping up. And I put it out there to you guys. If you can step up and help Janet, um, you'd be doing me a real solid and probably helping her out a lot more <laughs> since since she is the one who actually needs uh, the help. She has a GoFundMe page. Uh, and I'm going to give you the link here. It is GoFundMe.f. Holy fuck, I can't give you that. I'm sorry. Jesus Christ. It's it's literally GoFundMe.com slash F slash Janet hyphen. But there's a million numbers and equal signs. And oh, I think there's a there might be an umlaut in there. I don't even know what's happening. Um, all right. So what we'll do is we'll do this. If you Google GoFundMe and Janet Borth, B-O-R-T-H, I'm sure the page will come up. And if it doesn't, uh, well, you don't even fuck it. You don't have to do that. Here's, I'm going to do this. I'm going to put the link on my Facebook page, facebook.com slash the 40 year old boy. And I'll also put it in the West side 86 jokers page, which is the fan club page for the show. If you don't know about it, you can check it out. Uh, go to Facebook, put in West side 86 jokers, the number eight, six, and it'll come up and the link will be there on either page for you. Go ahead and step up and, uh, and do what you can, you know, and here's the thing. I'm not, I'm not yelling. I'm not screaming. I'm not pushing you into doing this. We live in a society now where GoFundMe is kind of the safety net for everyone. And I know you're, you're deluged by people all the time who need help. And, uh, I, I think as a society, when people need help, you reach out and you, 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 you help them up, you do what you can. And you know this, you, you've, you've, you've heard the show. You've heard me. I've heard you. We, we're all on the same page. If you can help Janet, go to Janet Borth her GoFundMe page and help her out. That would be terrific. Uh, and I, I just thank you for indulging me and for listening. Uh, Bert is, you know, just a, a, a great friend. He and Janet are no longer together. I don't want you to get, you know, don't write yay Bert or whatever. And not that it matters anyway. They're friends. Ah, shut up. All right. The bottom line is Janet needs our help. And if you guys can do that, that would be fantastic. And if you can't, I totally understand. Cause again, man, it is hard for everybody right now. I completely get that. Uh, But if there's anything you can do and you uh, can reach out and help someone who is in a position of needing real help, that would be fantastic. Her name is Janet Borth. I love her. Great friend of mine. And uh, she has a GoFundMe page. The links are available on Facebook, on the Facebook fan club page, and also on my personal page, facebook.com slash the 40 year old boy. And uh, I don't know if there was a commercial before this or if there's a commercial after this, but either way, there's also a podcast. Love you guys. Thanks for your help. Go.
Recording in progress, or what is this? We are recording. We are recording to the cloud because I have uh, forty-seven gigabytes of video on my computer right now. Ugh. Is it all just video of you smiling, practicing to be happy? That is exactly what it is. <laughs> sure, and so you want to record yourself. This is what I look like when I'm very happy, and I got to remember this. I've got to keep it in my brain at all times. I must have this image of myself being happy because otherwise I'm going to terrify people. <laughs> Do you find that having the mask on, you forget to smile? Uh, well, I uh, I have a whole other uh, element of that, too. I can't smile with my teeth because I've got that two-car garage between my front tooth and my side fang. So it's like people are like, wow, I can see your uvula right through that. Well, nobody's going to get that deep into your mouth. That, that would be a creepy smile right there. Uh, if you're not if you're not seeing this, which you're not, because it's not a visual medium, as I keep saying every fucking week, uh, Lily has what can only be described as a uh, a divot in the back of her mouth. Like there's no tooth. Like it's. Literally... I had a, I had to have a tooth pulled. Yeah. I see. Well, it's going. And, and it's someday, going. someday, I will afford to have something put in there so my teeth stop shifting because now I have a gap in my front teeth because it, I've it, gone two <laughs> years with a tooth pulled. As I've mentioned, teeth are uh, a miracle. Teeth are They're always a luxury. to me. Well, I, I, everyone has them, quite frankly, uh, and you use them almost every day, I would say, if you're lucky. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> I'm going to say if you're a lucky person, you use your teeth every single day. Because, I mean, look, do I am, I am I coming from a privileged place to say that I use my teeth every day? Perhaps I am. Maybe there are people out there who don't get to use their teeth every day. Uh, but teeth always amaze me because they're just bones. They're just bones on the outside of your face, which are fucking hysterical. All they all the, they're covered by a th- you know two thin lips. But if you peel your lips back, holy lord, there's a horror movie. I mean, it's, it's the craziest. <laughs> if you if you ever sit and think, because again, there's things we take for granted. I talk about it all the time, and one of them is teeth. You because your teeth, man, you fucking. I, your, your whole body is a machine that you've used for however long you're fucking alive. And you bitch about your toaster crapping out after a fucking year, or you're like, oh man, my car needs an oil change, man. What about your <laughs> fucking body at 55 years old, man? Your fucking knees are like, yeah, I, when, when, when's the relief shift? When are those guys getting here? It's like, <laughs> hey man, they're not. Your fucking knees are your knees. They're just, that's just who you are, buddy. You got a lifetime. I mean, look, you got a lifetime gig. You should be happy about that. You're not in danger of getting replaced. You're not going on the unemployment line. You're fucking knees until this guy has to take the permanent rest. And then you guys are done. You can knock off. Feel free to punch out once this guy's finished. And then, and sometimes the knees get to kick off early because you, you got to lay in a bed yeah. for two years before you die. And the knees are just kind of like, ah. You know, that's the thing. When you're dying, please know this. When you're laying in a hospital bed, intubated or whatever the fuck, when cancer is ravaging your bones, know that your knees are like, finally. Yes. Your knees are Burgess Meredith at the end of Twilight Zone. There's like, finally, there's enough time. We can relax. And the other bones are like, hey, knees, how about a little fucking help? And you're like, fuck you, man. We worked for 75 fucking years. We're taking this time to relax. You guys can fight off cancer on your own. We got no interest in it. We know nobody gets cancer of the knee. The knee are tough motherfuckers. They're like, fuck you, man. You can't come. Even the cancer knows not to fuck with your knees because your knees have gone through it, man. Your knees have been the fucking burden. They have carried you. Literally, like that that line when one or three footprints or whatever the fuck that was when I carried you. Jesus' knees were like, fuck you, man. That's us. That's not you, baby. That is all us. <laughs> fucking even Jesus' knees are pissed off. I'm like, fuck you, dude. You had three days off and you jumped up. We were done. We were ready to kick it. You fucking make us push a rock out of the way. What the fuck is your problem, man? <laughs> King of fucking kings. Bullshit on that. <laughs> now we gotta go. We had to carry that cross all the way to the fucking mount, and then finally they nail you to it. So we got some time off. But then you get you're dead. You're finished. We're done. And then you fucking wake up and you push a rock. You force us to push a rock out of the way. Fuck you, man. Go make us a fish, <laughs> or a hundred fish, or a thousand fish. Ooh. <laughs> Your knees don't fuck around. Your body is fucking ridiculous. It just it is. is, man. And it's I always. Whenever I talk about it, I always feel like, you know, I'm one of those fucking BBC idiots. You know what I mean? Because it's like, it's just, you take your body completely for granted. 
But then if you watch what like like you take you take frogs for granted. Frogs are just dudes who just hop around and they live in a swamp, whatever the fuck, good for them. But then you watch one of those BBC specials and you're like, holy shit, frogs eat flies who normally would lay maggots who normally destroy the atmosphere, which means frogs keep us alive. Jesus Christ. There's always some <laughs> weird connection between us and some animal that you had no idea. Because when you're outside, you're like, ah, fuck dragonflies. And then realize, oh, dragonflies have kept rubella from from multiplying because they eat a certain flower. And you're like, holy shit, the dragonflies have defeated rubella. We must fucking hail the dragonfly. But then if a dragonfly landed on you, you'd kick the shit out of it. <laughs> you'd be like, fuck you, dragonfly. What the fuck, man? How dare you? There's no rubella here. Take a fucking walk. You're just bothering my picnic. <laughs> People don't think about it. You take it for granted and you take your body for granted and you take your teeth for granted because your teeth, dude, yeah. think about your, dude, think about the average abuse you put your tooth through when you go to a county fair. <laughs> I think I talked about this. I'm, I, I swear to God, I must have talked about this on the fucking show where you just show up, you're pouring acid in your mouth constantly to fucking uh -huh. fry, cut the enamel off. And then you're biting into fucking hot grease and fucking crunchy shit and like oh my god it's brutal i talked about it last week i ate a fried chicken sandwich that unfortunately was a foot and a half tall you know <laughs> and it's like it cuts your mouth open like fucking captain crunch you you know what your gums are actually pissed your your teeth your teeth are your teeth but your gums are like hey what the fuck because your teeth are, are protecting your gums your gums are defenseless your teeth are actually have to masticate everything really small otherwise your gums would be torn the fuck apart God damn it, your body. It's fucking crazy. Hi. Hey, what's happened to Mike Schmidt, 40 year old boy podcast? How are you? I'm fine. Thank you. I'm okay, I think. I always ask people how they are now. It's a it's become a crutch almost, I suppose. And it's not that I don't care how they are, but they can't answer me clearly. <clears throat> but I have this weird uh Charles Manson thing in my head where they all go, fine. Like I mean everybody's <laughs> all excited. Hey, how you doing out there? Fine. All right, good. Glad to hear it. Like I'm I like I have a classroom of people that I'm addressing in some way. Uh, or a cult, you know, a, a, a cabin full of people who are barefoot and sleeping in dirt floors and waiting to go stab somebody because I told them to. Maybe both. Um, we tried, boy, we tried. For, remember for years, we were like, take your shirt off on the bus and scream. We had also, I tried to make a cult. But you know what you need for a cult? A charismatic leader who cares. And unfortunately, <laughs> I'm I'm one of those three things. <laughs> I'm no leader and I don't care. Charisma <laughs> out the ass. Forget it. I'll I'll flood your whole fucking in the ground swimming pool with charisma. You can do fucking backstroke through it, but the rest of it I got none of it. Leadership? No, thank you. Could not be less interested. Hey, is there a back to this classroom even further back so I could throw spitballs <laughs> from a farther distance? Nobody fucking wants to pay attention to anything and be a leader. Who the fuck is that person? I always laugh when I see these zombie shows and they're like, oh, this guy's gonna take point. I'm like, you're goddamn right he is. Because <laughs> I'm going to sit here in the back and hope the first wave can hold you guys off because otherwise I'm dead. I'm going to get fucking <laughs> comped. I'm not. I, I watched The Last of Us. You watched The Last of Us? I, I am current on that right now. Oh, good. Then we can discuss it. Well, I'll tell well, you what. I, warn people before you start discussing it because folks, there listen, are two episodes. Well, I won't go. I, I might go into to detail. I might. But I mean, but also I will tell you this. I have a friend who wrote me and he's like, hey, man, why should I watch this? And I said, well, uh, what do you mean? And he's like, I, I watched, we watched part of it, and it's literally every zombie movie I've ever fucking watched in my entire life. And he goes, the same thing happens, you know, the, 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 human, this is my favorite part. Same thing happens, humanity falls, and then there's, and I'm like, oh, yeah, that's true. I, I can see where you would find quibble with the fact that humanity has fallen. <laughs> and and that, that you would be like, oh, I'm, I'm so bored watching the fall of humanity. Good Christ, how many times are you going to drag this <laughs> this old trope in front of us? But I right. We're experiencing it right now. Well, as, essentially, <laughs> I, the fact that yesterday Microsoft bought that chat GP and oh. they, they put $10 billion into it, dude, they are they are writing better humans than I could ever hope to be. <laughs> they are currently creating a much better model and version of me, <laughs> one who, who is thin and doesn't eat a, doesn't eat a cheeseburger at 2.30 in the morning. You know what I mean? They're just fucking... It's it's good for them. Good for Microsoft. Get get busy. There's that thing to get busy living or get busy dying. Well, look, I'd love to get busy dying, but I need Microsoft to write the new me so I can go ahead and take my I, I want to be the knees of my life right now. I want to sit down and fucking do nothing. Microsoft better write a new fucking Mike Schmidt and get me off the fucking hook. Oh, Christ. So I'm watching that. My buddy's like, why should I watch this? And I'm like. I understand that because I'm I have a lot of that now with like superhero movies where I don't I don't yeah. I'm like dude what the fuck I don't uh, good oh wait oh wait right, hold on a second 
are you telling me that something happened to this person's dad? Is that what I'm understanding? <laughs> Fathers are, you know, we always talk, there's always that joke about the absentee father has has ruined, you know, well, the absentee father has ruined people in real life. But I'll tell you what, in the movies, it sure did make a goddamn lot of cape dudes fucking fly around and save the world. <laughs> I think if anything, we should be happy for the fucking the the, the fatherless society that is a, 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 the vanguard of what's going to happen in the future. Because if it wasn't for fucking lack of fathers, we wouldn't have a Superman for fuck's sake. Superpowers through trauma. Yeah. Fucking uh, the worst one. Here's the one that I, and look, because I don't know if this is canon or not. And look, spoiler alert, whatever the fuck. If you're if you're ten years behind on Marvel, brace yourself. <laughs> they had they had a movie. I am. <laughs> well, I'm sorry, you're gonna hear this. <laughs> I don't know if it was the fucking uh, what was it? Was it the Winter Soldier? It might have been Winter Soldier. I don't know which one it was, but it turns out yeah, it was Winter Soldier. If you don't know, who, you don't know who Winter Soldier is. His name's Bucky, and in the comic books, he was he was Captain America's pal. And then he wound up becoming the Winter Soldier. He's got a metal arm and uh, an awesome hair. He's just, he's a beautiful, it's a guy, it's an actor named Sebastian Stan. And he is lovely. He is yes. unbelievably gorgeous. And he's got this fucking Wella Balsam, fucking Dorothy <laughs> Hamill, yucca do fucking hair. It's just fucking falling all over the place and looks amazing. And and then they were like, what can we do to make everybody want to fuck this guy? Eye patch. There you go. Let's throw it on there. <laughs> <laughs> this guy is certainly fuckable now, but what could we possibly do? Eye patch, yes. Is there any chance he could chew a toothpick as well and I could just go full on <laughs> snake pliskin with this fucking guy? Because I want it. Uh, so Winter Soldier, they show a video, like whatever, there's a plot twist, whatever. And the whole thing is like Iron Man is kind of like the bootlicker for the government. That's the whole deal. Tony Stark, he's like, yeah, man, we should follow what the government says. And Captain America's like, there's what the government says. And there's what's right. Like he's uh, he's kind of realizing <laughs> that the government is kind of shitty. Wait, what? Uh, yeah, that's right. Um, <laughs> even in comic books, even in comic book movies, oh, they, because no. they and this is one of the inherent flaws of these movies is they don't make. They've decided to to pursue the the hey the government might be shady and and it and pits heroes against heroes angle instead of going you know in the comic books. All of these heroes have amazing villains that we could write and they could fight them in this movie instead of being mad at a senator. I, I don't tune in to see Wolverine mad at a senator. But I mean, but well, that's bullshit because in X-Men, the whole fucking anti-mutant act and all that stuff, that made sense. But when they started making like the 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 government start telling and look, it is an interesting story. I can't say it's not. <laughs> When the fucking government starts telling, like, Captain America what to do, and he's like, what the fuck, man? I'm, you know, literally, I don't know if you guys are aware of this. Check out my business card. Look at the second name in my, in, in the word in my name. It's it's right there. America. I'm the guy. You don't have to give me orders and tell me what to do, which is bullshit. Anyway, Captain America starts to think that things are wrong, and Iron Man is like, well, what if we just do what they said, or whatever the fuck? Which is a drag, because Tony Stark's not a pussy, but they make him one. Anyway. <laughs> then the Winter Soldier's like a big deal. So they're like, oh, what's up with the Winter Soldier? He did a terrible thing, didn't he? And then they show Tony Stark a video. I, 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 don't, I don't even remember exactly how it happened. But because, again, look, Batman's dad killed in an alley a hundred times. We've seen it a, a billion times. If I were to see those pearls bouncing off the cement one more fucking time. <laughs> I didn't know he was wearing pearls. He was. He was like, he's a, <laughs> look, he's a switch. There's no doubt about it. Bruce Wayne, his dad. Uh, sometimes, you know, you're a powerful man. Sometimes you want to feel like you let it all go. You go outside. You just close I, your vulnerable side. Oh, wait. The wife was there, too. That's right. His he mom was. was. <laughs> yeah, that's Martha Wayne. Martha Not to be confused Wayne. with Martha Kent, who is also Superman's mom. And when Batman fought Superman, uh, somebody said Martha. And uh, Batman was like, why did you say that name? And then it turned out that Batman and Superman were friends because their mom had the same name or whatever the fuck. And it was the Aww. stupidest no, 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 they, no. They Take that bonded back. over a mom's name. Eh, I don't How know if they bonded. Stupid. It was stupid. And it was a, a it was a moment I remember in the theater even I I like there's this scene in Family Guy that's a meme now where Peter Peter just throws up his hands in a movie theater and he goes, Done and he walks out. <laughs> yeah. And I totally felt like that and at that point in the movie where I was like, You're not really going Martha Martha on me here, are you? You're not Martha, really Martha. gonna make Martha Martha happen. But they did. They made Martha Martha happen. And it's a meme now and everybody jokes about it and it's stupid. And it happened and you can't forget it. You can't erase it. <laughs> James Gunn is now taking over the DC universe. 
And oh, it's good. so funny because James Gunn takes it over. And he's like, I'm, he's going to make a 10 year plan for these movies. And it doesn't matter because whenever he puts out a thing and he's like excited to announce the new slate, someone will tweet Martha at him. They'll just, they'll just literally <laughs> forever and ever. Martha, will, Mar- will Martha be in, in it? Will you have Martha in the new, oh. in the new DC movies? Everybody you've, you've just, you've cut your own balls off with this nonsense. It's terrible. Um, so in, in the Iron Man, Captain America, Winter Soldier saga, and again, like I said, I don't, I didn't, I didn't read the books. I don't know if this is canon. Maybe this happened, but it sure seemed convenient to me. Uh, Batman lost his dad in an alley. Superman lost his dad to any number of things in the movies. If you understand, he, <laughs> he fell down. He was, he was caught in a tornado. Like there's all these different examples of, of that, all of them to show you that. And again, it's the most basic bullshit with all of his power. Clark Kent couldn't even save his father. Like that bullshit. You know what I mean? I'm just trying to drive home that. And also fucking Spider-Man's uncle gets shot by a criminal who Spider-Man could have beaten up earlier. He, he, but he let him go. And so now Spider-Man's sad. And, and nobody, nobody becomes Spider-Man because they're like, wouldn't it be cool to be like a spider and swing around? That'd be fucking <laughs> awesome. No, everybody's like, my uncle's dead. I got to wear pajamas. <laughs> it's like so fucking stupid. Because normally, if your uncle died, you would. You'd wear pajamas and sleep around the house. But if you have the tactile and human strength of a spider, you can't just lay around in your pajamas. You got to go out and fuck guys up because you're also mad about your uncle and you're mad at yourself. Really, let's be honest. Spider-Man is just kicking the shit out of himself every time he fights anybody. I don't give a fuck <laughs> if it's the lowest thug fleeing from a seven. 11 with a gun in his hand and a brown bag full of money or the scorpion spider-man is fighting himself every time he takes somebody on because he's mad at himself about his fucking uncle and he still can't forgive himself over it and i can't blame him because if honestly if i was like being a dick and some criminal ran past and then a day later he shot my uncle i'd be like fuck i gotta fuck that guy up i'm not gonna put on some pajamas <laughs> fucking spider-man what the fuck man you're, you're mute what happened Oh, I just said, holy fuck, laughing. <laughs> oh, you're very nice to pretend that this is funny. No, I'm just laughing because I keep thinking about all of my friends who have superhero pajamas. And literally, <laughs> that is that is what they were made for, was to sell sleepwear to children. Essentially, yeah, really. <laughs> all, yeah. all the world Stan, is shit. <laughs> Stan Lee, by the transitive property, Stan Lee invented underoos. He did. He, <laughs> he did. did. He did. He could be. He could literally be a clothing merchant. You could call him that. He's a, he's a he's a textiles guy. He's not even a fucking hero guy. He's not a comic book guy. Not a saga guy. This man invented the fucking hero pajamas under us. That's what he did. That's who he is. Uh, who he was anyway. Um, he was so also Iron very man. creative. No, he was also very creative. Some of this is amazing and it's good storytelling, but some of it is just yeah. Yes, I agree. We're having, we're having fun. I certainly. agree. It's. Well, I grew up again. One of the earliest photographs of me is holding a Spider-Man comic book. I loved it. I loved it so much. And I still, again, Ed, but that's, that's, I will tell you, that's another issue. Remind me about Iron Man and Winter Soldier in a second. But that's another issue is that one of the earliest photographs of my life, I'm probably three and I'm holding a Spider-Man comic book on a couch in my house. The problem is that now at 55, a lot of people are angry that Spider-Man isn't the same guy he was when they were three. Right. So they get mad. They're like, they, cause everybody, everybody is able to make their own Spider-Man. Yes. Right? You can experience him through the prism of the comic books and stories, but then when he doesn't act the way you want him to act in the movies, you're like, no, that's not what Spider-Man does. Spider-Man <laughs> does this other thing he did that, you know, you're, everybody's they're Yes. They're raging at their childhood. They're all shaking fists at nostalgia because they want it to be. A, it's like, you know, who else has the same problem? Look, and I've talked about the shit a million times. I apologize, everybody. But the same, you know, who else goes through this is bands. Fucking bands go through it all the time. Like David Lee Roth has a podcast, okay? Which is <laughs> okay. Which, that is that is, you want to talk about rock fucking bottom for for a guy who was literally spin kicking balloons and fucking eighty chicks a night. But I mean, now all of a sudden he's he's me, which is the fuck. I can't imagine a worse <laughs> rock bottom for David Lee Roth than to go. Hey, I hope I'm that fat guy from the valley. Wouldn't that be fucking awesome? <laughs> um, but then I found out. So it's the it's the season. It's year two of his podcast, but. It's some he's hired somebody to go in and edit year one and and take stories out and repurpose them and just re- re-release them as episodes. And I can't blame him for that. Look, podcasts man, are hard. The podcasts are hard. There's no doubt about it. But also at the same time, 
hey man, if David Lee Roth has a story about him in the jungle studs fighting a fucking cloud of wasps and then <laughs> running upon some New Guinea tribesmen who found a root that when they fucking beat it what? into a goddamn paste, they eat it and they all turn into the yard birds and sing for a month in the jungle. I would tell that story every fucking oh. year. Like, I mean, if that's your story, because again, that's what I'm saying. I have a story where I got into an argument at the AT&T store, okay? <laughs> fucking David Lee Roth digs out, he jumps out of a fucking uh, a plane in Jakarta and lands on a rooftop with his parachute stuck on a TV antenna, and then the natives worship him as a god because he's on a roof higher above them, and they all bring him <laughs> gifts. Like, that's his fucking story. You're like, yes, I would tell that fucking story forever. That's not me going to the Walgreens and getting a naked Sprite. That's him fucking living a goddamn life. It's awesome. <laughs> So why wouldn't you repurpose those fucking stories? Oh of course. <laughs> but the problem with it is David Lee Roth is, I'm going to say, 66 years old. And that's probably light. No, he's actually, he's he's 13 years older than me. He's 68. Okay, because I remember that. He's, he's, hey, Siri, how old is David Lee Roth? Oh, no. <laughs> he's 68. Ah, see, like I just said, he's 13 years older than me. Yeah. He made them all lie. It's tough, though, because he made them all lie about their age. Um, who the band they, the band van halen oh okay he had them all yeah no I mean, everybody in the world <laughs> well, I was gonna say, this does not sound well for the groupies <laughs> listen that's what it did everybody Ooh. oh pl- like that didn't happen come on i mean i'm uh, sure, there I'm was sure some, it did and it's awful there was some fucking brooke shields 12 year old pretty baby chick who put a bunch of fucking rouge on her face and slipped backstage only to be I bored to tears hear about it by right. dave telling some story about a punch bowl he bought in china <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's funny you say you don't want to hear about I had my my brother I, I just got into a thing with my brother he's he was angry first of all they're angry about the money that people make always and it turns into this I'll, all right remind me about let me try that okay I, I am I am holding <laughs> on Iron Man and Winter Soldier I am holding on your brother being angry at money okay, okay. <laughs> which I think I've talked about on here anyway um but Dave made the band lie about their ages wow and it was that thing where they they all stuck to it. And then Eddie was just kind of a go along dude, but then he discovered how much he loved cocaine. So he was like, yes. And then as he, he got out of the, the under out from under Dave, he started to kind of like, he was angry. And then he literally was like, he made us take three years off my age. I'm this age. Like I'm not that age. And he, he exposed a ton of things that, that came out. Uh, and then Dave grabbed a samurai sword and did a somersault. And everybody went, ah, we don't remember any of this stuff because Dave transfixed <laughs> us with his motions, his, his edged weapons and his gymnastics. <laughs> Listen, if you want to distract anybody from a story, I, I, I say this. If you're going to run for president in this country, learn how to handle edged weapons and do gymnastics because you will distract <laughs> anybody from any bad news that you have. Anything at all. You can come out. You can say, hey, I have terrible news. Uh, we accidentally dropped a nuclear bomb on Belgium and then you do a split kick and then you do a fucking sword <laughs> trick and everybody's like, that was awesome. How great is that? No more waffles or our waffles will glow in the night. But at the same time, look at us doing fucking sword tricks. God damn. I love this dude. How does he do that in a suit? Uh, you will easily distract anybody. If you can handle edge weapons and do gymnastics, you can, whatever, whatever message you have, the blow will be softened by your, <sighs> your, your fucking katanas and your somersaults. Absolutely. You'll put people on edge. <laughs> Jesus. So, I... uh, so, oh, so the, Dave has a podcast and, and he, he's, you know, on Facebook, he's on Facebook, which also, again, uh, rich people don't, don't ever use social media ever. <laughs> don't go anywhere near it. There's no, that's us. That's, that's the plebs. That's all the people in the pit below you. You don't want to, why would you jump into the pit? Look, there's a reason when rock stars dive into the pit, they are carried aloft in a Christ-like pose. You're better than us. Stop <laughs> fucking pretending you're not. Be better than us. I don't, I don't want to get into a discussion about applesauce with Hall and Oats. I mean, what the fuck? Why they should not? They shouldn't even eat applesauce. They just eat drugs all day. They're fucking Hall and Oats. You're rock stars, man. You're still rock stars. You're 105 years old. And you're still out there talking about a rich girl. You're a rich guy. Nobody cares. They still want to hear you sing it. God damn it. Oates shaved the mustache and stayed famous. That's That was the level of fame he reached. He finally went, you know what? I'm, I'm comfortable enough to shave this stupid walrus mustache off my face. And he still maintained his Oatesness. He, he You would think all of his magic would be in the mustache. You would think that he would immediately lose all of his Oats credibility. 
But no, he shaved the mustache and he remained Oates. And that was a fucking ballsy chance. And also, isn't oh, Oates... I think Oates also might be a... Uh, I don't know if he's a switch hitter, but Oates is... I think Oates might be a little... I, I, there's pictures... I don't know. I, he's, he's, all right, and this will seem like... He seems very comfortable in the ladies' clothing, Oates. Um, <laughs> there's no, and I'm not saying it's yeah. bad. I'm just saying it's... I'm wondering if it's a thing. Like, if he's gradually... Like, I saw a photo of them from the old days where he's wearing, like, mules. Like, what the fuck are you... Why are you wearing we- a wedge with a wedge? Like with the you know like a fuck I'm like all right good for you dude and then also they had the album cover where they sorry were kiss wore platform boots <laughs> there's no doubt yeah I, but all right but he's he's wearing wedges transcends art <laughs> I know <laughs> and and again he literally just you can invoke the name of David Bowie and and everything yeah. is forgiven for all of these people for all eternity there's no doubt I mean there but they're... do you think there may be a story coming where there's like a different life he wanted to lead or something no, is no, that no, what no. you mean oh I don't okay. think it's so anything like, like that. he shaved his mustache like he shaved his legs and, <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, and then he was a she and hey <laughs> yeah. babe I was like is that what you're is there is there like this rumor going around Oates okay. took a walk on the wild side I didn't okay. realize this about him I said <laughs> hey Joe who's Joe by the way in that song all right never mind um so David Lee Roth puts out a podcast and it's <laughs> uh and again, I don't, I don't begrudge him this because they, first of all, I begrudge him being on Facebook. You shouldn't do it. None of these guys should do this ever. It's hilarious. Well, they're, this, it's smart of them to go on Facebook because that's where the old people are. You know what I mean? That's, that's where, you know, young, <laughs> young people have no fucking idea who the Buckinghams are, but the Buckinghams probably have a thriving page on Facebook because somebody loves them. You know what I mean? It's yeah, just one of those deals. Absolutely. And so <laughs> that's, that's where you want to end up. But Dave, like in your, in your mind's eye, you still have Dave from 1984. You still no, have Dave. No, in your mind's eye, you have that. I'm speaking. I'm not. I'm not talking about you specifically. I'm talking about the umbrella of people who like David Lee Roth or who from, love from David the beginning. Lee Roth. Yes, 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 yes. You still I mean, envision look, that. Th- there are people who are like, "This guy's a fucking idiot," and there's no, there's no <laughs> doubt. There are people who just hate Dave. There's well, just, I it, thought he was forever, but it didn't stop me from liking what he was doing on stage. Yeah, he's he's a handful. I mean, we're not going to argue about this. <laughs> yeah. so the man, he literally used to do monkey hour with his parents and stuff. And then as he got older, he did monkey hour with his friends and stuff. And they're all like, why? We're not your parents, man. We don't have to take this shit. <laughs> but then it, I just I read Ted Templeman's book. All right. Uh, about Dave. Uh, well, it's about it's about Ted Templeman's life. But Dave played a gigantic part in it, obviously, because once. And by the way, there's like you know, 15 chapters before we even get to Van Halen. Ted Templeman is an incredibly successful guy. Ted Templeman discovered the Doobie Brothers in a fucking roadhouse. I mean, he, wow. someone told him to go check them out, and he did, and, uh, and he produced them, and he stuck with them. And the same thing happened with Van Halen. Someone said to him, hey, man, you got to come see this fucking band. Like, at the, I think it was the Gazaris, I think they went. And uh, so him and some guys from the record company went. And uh, and, they, and and literally, I'm, I'm paraphrasing because I read the book a, a while ago, but they said to him, you know, what do you think? And he's like, well, the singer is a fucking abomination, but Jesus <laughs> Christ, this guitar player is ridiculous. Like they they couldn't get over the fact like what they were watching. And that was when Ed would play with his fucking back to the crowd because he didn't want them to see what he was doing on the fucking guitar half the time. You know what I mean? So um, so they but they were like, we got to get this guy in a studio like yesterday. So let's fucking do it. Do you think they would have been successful without David to the success that they became? No. Yeah. No. See, I again, I'm like anybody can be really great at something, but if you don't have something that's out in front to make people go, wow, really talented isn't enough, unfortunately, because we're that's our society. Agreed. I'm going to I'm going to argue with what you just said, though, when you said someone can be really great at something. He was he was one of the greatest of all time no like I, I agree with you i, I i'm agree not with saying you. yeah he i'm not saying he wouldn't he would have been successful no matter what yeah but would they have been the number one band in the world without but Dave? the band van halen would not have yeah i mean even with even with sammy hagar it was good but it wasn't uh the, the charisma wasn't there and again i different. like sammy overall and again it was fun yeah. it was like watching bowie go from band to band and incarnation to incarnation i'm gonna i'm gonna say this real quick go ahead Bef- before we recorded today i texted lily and i go look man i got nothing today like, i feel like <laughs> i am on such fumes and i'm creatively bereft that i don't know if i can talk to you today she goes well let's just open the microphones and see what happens and the very fact that now we're about to talk about sammy and dave and what van halen was better <laughs> like i'm like how could I ever in my life ever think I don't have something to talk about? This is constantly, this particular topic alone is simmering on the burner at all times, at all times. to be exposed and discussed. Yeah. Um, I, I, they were a different band. Yes, absolutely. It was a absolutely. different kind of charisma. Yeah. They were a hits band. They were a, a radio rock 
you know, top 40 yeah. type of, but, but, but like still with an edge, you know what I mean? On the, on certainly on the deep cuts, but they would write, Eddie wrote singles. He liked, he liked writing singles. That was his deal. So with, with Sammy and also there was another thing is with, with Dave. I apologize. There's someone please. at my front door. All right. Are you going to die? Just, just no, I just don't know why someone's at my front door banging. <laughs> okay. um, and I'm the only one here. So I'm right. a little concerned. Keep talking. I will be right back. We don't. Need why to would you still? Out. I don't even know why um, you're still. In... Give me one second to figure out if I'm going to die. If I scream, call 911. OK. All right. Yeah. So everyone just pause for a moment. <laughs> well, that's OK. By the time you're done talking here, they're going to be gone. All right. You've gone. She's left her chair now. And uh, <sighs> this will be a time for me to say this. I hate this. Uh, I literally feel like I'm on a roll and I feel like I'm talking and then my partner bails and you're just like, okay. And I get it because life is life and things have to happen. Uh, but you want, you know, nobody's here to hear me complain, but also I don't want to tell these stories without her here because then it's more fun to talk when she's, you don't care about the machinations of this. You don't want to see me peel the onion. Um, so what, let me, all right, let me do this. Let me do a roll call of what exactly, you know what, why don't I do this? Let's throw in some plugs while she's gone. What the fuck? Why not? Did you know I'm part of the Misfit Toys co-op? I am. You know what? Here's a plug. Actually, here's a thing I stopped doing. I don't know why, but unfortunately it's come up where I stopped doing this. Uh, oh, wait, she's, hold on. She's back. I don't get to do it. <laughs> okay. I apologize for all of this. Um, I am on a medication that is temperature stable and has to be refrigerated. And it wasn't supposed to be here today, but it's here. So I had to put it in the fridge. Um, are you going to say, are you going to call that the Dante of medications? Is that Dante <laughs> Sillin? I'm not uh, even no, supposed to be here today. Uh, the, good news, me, the good news is my medication is here and I will be okay. And I will be able to take it on schedule. I apologize for interrupting, but life happens. And I'm sure you said something funny while I was gone. Now let's get back to Dave. I actually I'm started this spiral. I started to do the thing where I'm like, this, this drives me crazy. If she's gone, there's no point in doing it, blah, blah, blah. And then I went, why am I doing this? Nobody wants to hear the machinations <laughs> of this. So I said, uh, trust me, I, I was literally telling them why they shouldn't listen anymore. And now you're well, back, I'm back and, and we're ready to go. <laughs> hey, look at that. Hey, I hope they didn't leave. So I hope I didn't send them away. Good Lord. <laughs> <laughs> So, so anyway, they were a different yeah. band, but, but what, but the question is eternal. Everybody's like, would they have been the same? Would they have been this? Would they, if they, look, if they had started that band with Sammy Hagar, they still would have been a hugely successful band. I don't know who, if they would have started with a different singer, like depending on who the singer was, um, but they wouldn't have been a phenomenon. They were a f fucking yeah. phenomenon with Dave. They just were. And it's like, it's funny because that's an argument that's lived forever. Like Dave always, cause look, I will acknowledge that Dave the role he played it was a monstrous role there was yeah. no doubt okay and his lyrics are fucking phenomenal i will fight anybody i know people want that people are like well you know this that bullshit his fucking his lyrics and his just just his asides just come on dave give me a break in in fucking unchained is like it makes the fucking song in addition to the riff they were magical together it's just like mick and keith you yeah know what I mean? It's just yeah. like Pete Townsend and Roger Daltrey. Now I, let's let's talk about those three those three groupings of people that we just talked about. Okay, Roger Daltrey and Pete Townsend. Pete Townsend hated fucking Roger Daltrey. He was terrified of him, and he stayed in the band because essentially Roger Daltrey's like, "I'm going to beat you up if you leave the band." He beat him up to get, he beat him up to let him join his band. It's completely I did not true. Know any of this. Google it. Roger Daltrey was a fucking bully. Like Roger Daltrey was, and Pete Townsend is like a fucking kind of a kind, sensitive soul and a oh withdrawn dude. He's also got a ton of rage in him for whatever reason. Yeah, which I probably, probably been beat up, bull bullied by Roger Daltrey for fucking years. But yeah, it's it's he literally like beat up Pete Townsend to get into his band, like that that thing. Uh, and and Keith hated Mick. Keith wanted Keith wow. wanted to drown Mick in the Caribbean. Like I mean, there's like these fucking stories where they fucking you know and and Eddie hated Dave, and Eddie Eddie wanted to play guitar. It, Eddie reminds me like I see a lot of Pete Townsend and Eddie. You know they wanted to they wanted to do what they wanted to do, and then did Eddie spiral off the planet when he found drugs? Yes, I mean he and Don Landy locked Dave out of the studio and wouldn't let him in as they were recording and shit. I mean it's it got crazy. It did during the 1984 recording sessions. They he People. he fucking. He went, but I mean, look, and this, and this is years before he lost his teeth and was recording with porn stars, which that was a fucking segment of Eddie's career that that doesn't get brought up a lot because he was saved. Like Janie saved him and Wolf saved him and they brought him back from the brink of that. And I'm sure Valerie had a ton to do with it, too. Val Valerie is like, I mean, she she wrote in, She's in the middle of a horrible divorce right now. Yeah. And she she claims that her fucking ex is a, she, she does it all. She vaguely 
hints that her ex was a narcissist and all these terrible fucking things that he did to her. But then also she wrote her autobiography about how much she loved Eddie and she knew that someday they'd be, they'd be back together again, wherever it is. And I'm like, well, you know, no offense, but that guy's following Eddie Van Halen into the situation. And then if he has to hear you constantly going, you know, I really loved Eddie, man, I love Eddie. And if Eddie's calling in the middle of the night to talk about shit and you're a soulmate, as a as a dude, you're sitting there just going, oh, all right, I'm, am I supposed to build a birdhouse while you're talking to the greatest guitarist of all time? I mean, it's like it's a weird situation to fucking step into. And so and also I'm not look, but I'm it also defending. takes it takes a special person to want to step into that situation. Yes. And it takes a special person to yeah. not to have to be able to deal with it. Yeah. And and also he could have been all fucked up before he got in there. She could have turned. Yeah. You know what? She could have basically said, I need I need a stronger guy than, you know, than Eddie. I could have, whatever. The, I don't know anything about it. Yeah. OK. All I know is now that she is in the middle of <clears throat> I think she's gotten her divorce and he's he wants like all this money. He wants support. He wants monthly this and all that bullshit. And so she as it always is the case when that happens with the dude, they try to paint him as like a leech and a pussy and all that kind of shit. And I don't know. I don't know. I have no idea what the fuck is going as on. As it all I know, always is in that case. It is. It, it Whenever I, I'm saying. Thing. Here's the thing. Rich people live by different rules, period. Yes. When there is money involved, everything is different. When there isn't money involved, people can be better people because there is nothing they can get from it. I'm talking about the yeah. roaches. I'm talking about public yeah. opinion and yeah. nameless faceless people yes they will always if a man is like hey i you know i'm i'm due support from her because of the years that we put in everybody will be like why don't you get a job you fucking pussy like why are you gonna mooch yeah, off your no, wife that's that's wrong again we we don't know the facts well that's I all i meant yeah. I, 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 yeah. I don't know the facts i truly don't yeah. you know what i mean and and who and it sucks but if he does some thing where he's like you know i I told her to get a cooking show. Then you're like, all right, go jump off a fucking cliff, you idiot. And please land on an iron rod. But fence. what if he did? What if he was the support that led her into doing that? Then he does deserve something just like the woman behind the scenes. So, again, don't know the facts. Don't know any of it. I didn't even know she was really in the middle of that because most of the stuff I see is silly, sweet stuff. Yeah. You know? Here's a fact. I catch a few TikToks. Here's a fact. I had a crush on her when I was fucking 11. So leave Me her the fuck too. alone. Leave her the fuck Me alone. Me too. Yeah. She was so cute. Yes unbelievable and then and then when she wound up with eddie i was just like ah, oh. it was it was the like for you know what all you assholes out there who watch princess diana's wedding that, that eddie and valerie were my princess diana and, and prince fuckhead that's exactly it I, I was so happy whatever his name is i know charles i know um but i mean i was and uh, their yeah. anniversary my birthday Oh, they yeah, ruined right. it now. <clears throat> did they really is that ruined my birthday no i don't know i'm just <laughs> what kidding if it did? <laughs> what if it did i was like oh god you know I would they got to, married on my birthday. I would love to eat this cake, but I'm thinking about Diana taking the, <laughs> taking the hairpin curve at just five miles too fast. Her and Dodie. Oh, uh, Dodie Fayed. We miss him. Uh, so Dave has a podcast. It's a podcast. And it's uh, available wherever I would imagine podcasts are sold. And he, he's out there repurposing it. <clears throat> but here's the, the thing that makes me laugh. And again, look, do I do I search for my agonies? I do. Clearly, I do. There's no. <laughs> this is not any. Nobody dumped this in my lap. This didn't come into my house. This isn't. This isn't required reading. I had to search out this because I I enjoy the, my agonies. So, uh, whenever whenever we put up an episode, there'll be comments underneath it. I'm like, all right, I'm gonna read these comments. I don't know why. I because because what else am I gonna do this afternoon? Care about my life? So I click on it, crunk, and then they all open. And this is if you remember the illusion I was getting to here is like where people put all of the yoke of their youth onto Spider-Man. So when yes. Spider-Man doesn't do what he wants them to do, they're just like, that's not what Spider-Man does. I yes. know what Spider-Man would do. And they're mad. And I, again, I do the same thing. I was mad uh, with, with certain things. I'm like, oh, like, oh, like Batman would ever do that. Like I, I've, I've literally said that out loud and then gone, <laughs> what is your problem, man? What is going on? Uh oh sure Moon Knight would let that girl do this <laughs> okay <laughs> fucking Moon Knight you're and also I didn't read Moon Knight I read some of it I was familiar with the character and thought he was awesome but then when I watched his show and Moon Knight is they invented a fucking superhero from Egypt because they wanted to Moon Knight Moon Knight is a fucking well because they made a TV all right Moon Knight is a first of all he has one of the best <laughs> costumes in the history of of comic books his costume is amazing. And he's had a couple of different costumes. Like he, when he's wearing the suit, when he's wearing the Moon Knight, when he's wearing the Moon Knight costume, and he's like got a cape and his fucking fighting sticks and his crazy crescent. Then he's like fucking awesome looking. Okay, he's a specter. He's so cool. But there's another version of him that wears a suit, like a a full 
completely white Moon Knight suit with a mask over his face, and he looks fucking incredible. He just like a lucha just, wrestler. Yeah, but you don't see nothing's exposed. His mouth is not okay. exposed. His eyes, none of it. He, it's it's almost like it's like Deadpool. If you remember what Deadpool okay, it's looked like, like Deadpool. With, with the red and black. Okay, yeah. imagine that just being white and pulled over your face. It just he just. But then they made the TV show, and Oscar Isaac, who is a fucking amazing, <laughs> amazing actor. Uh, I couldn't wait when I heard that he was doing it. Then they they released these videos early of him training and fighting and doing fucking like actual combat. And I'm like, oh, dude, this is going to be so good. And then you watch it and it was the same bullshit story you got all the time out of these things. You know what I mean? Like, you know, Moon, it's and it so turns funny out- because you don't want anything to change. But yet when it doesn't change, you're like, oh, is this ain't boring shit. Because they, well, they invented, I don't know. I want them to be exciting i know what you're saying well, no, I mean, I just, just, just I be canon I, I maybe it's because i got older and i didn't realize how many superheroes had so many issues with their dads like I, mean, <laughs> I had no fucking clue and i guess something would have to send you off the fucking planet to go ahead and wear a goofy set of pajamas and punch a guy in the face in an alley i mean that makes literally i don't know why it doesn't happen more often quite frankly with the relationships we have with our fathers in this country how are more people not donning garb that, that is fucking monochromatic <laughs> and punching guys in the face in an alley go ahead and do it that's what it's traced to fucking so in moon knight like moon knight's moon knight and he's fucking bananas he's got like nine personalities but then they invented a fucking superhero they invented some woman because she's egyptian right i think i talked did i talk about this on here i don't know if i, did. I don't know they fucking know. invented a, a, an egyptian superhero named the silver scarab <laughs> oh that's cool i'm sure it is and uh and so Wait, she, look it's not any weirder than superman or batman but, but she's fucking moon knight's girlfriend she doesn't have to have superpowers but then they give her superpowers because they want to empower like egyptian people look the fuck. i'm sorry but of course she has to have superpowers we Yawn. we all saw how bad it was when spider-man tried to date a normal woman uh he that's all he dates is normal women he dated the black cat for a while in the book I don't know if he it dated her so much. He just it fucking doesn't work her. well. Yeah, you, you have. To, oh my god! But you imagine, have to date a superhero if you're a superhero. You cannot date out I of agree. your genre. It's like, <laughs> it's like if you're a comedian, you should date comedians or you whatever the Ooh, fuck. That I sounds guess. awful. No, are you kidding me? You, you trade bits and then you're jealous of each other all the time. That's fucking fun. <laughs> sounds awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I've never dated a comedian. I wouldn't know. Um, so. Sure, sure, uh, sure enough, Silver Scarab. I'm just going to talk about this. I don't look. I don't give a fuck that there's an Egyptian superhero. Good for them. Good for the Egyptians. I, I mean, they had the pyramids. That was good enough. I thought. I mean, pyramids are fucking majestic. Not how, that's not how it works. If you want to take pride in being, you know, first of all, you walk like an Egyptian. Then you take pride in being an Egyptian. You got pyramids. You, you, you fucking have history and mummies and shit. That's fucking awesome. But now you need the silver scarab running around. So anyways, in the, yes. in the fucking show, there's a fight and it's a whiz bang fucking a thousand terrorists and somebody throws a bus and a bunch of crazy shit happens. And there's like a little four year old girl in the middle of all of it. And the silver scarab comes over and she's like, pew, pew. And she fights a bunch of dudes. And then she stops. And she looks at the four year old girl. And I'm not even joking. The four year old girl is like, are you a superhero? Like literally like the fucking most unbelievable complete stereotypical bullshit little kid voice and and the silver scarab recognizing the moment of ah look at this little girl who's being empowered twice because she's also a young lady and a young egyptian lady and she's never seen anything like me and she just goes yes i am and then the fight continues and it's uh it's such a corny fucking terrible moment that doesn't belong ever to be spoken into existence it's so bad uh but then again Maybe that happened in the comic book, and I don't know about it. And so I'm 55 years old. It happened with every male superhero ever. There was always some little boy who looked up to Superman because he saved their teddy bear. Also stupid. Yes. Okay, I'm I'm not saying that it's a good moment, but I'm saying in the moment that I saw it with a a woman who literally just got made a superhero (laughs) in five minutes ago, and then this little kid in the middle of a terrorist fight wanders in. Believe me, I told you, Black Adam... In Black Adam, The Rock kept telling us for weeks, he's like, he's a, you know what, he's a, he's a vicious, mean killer. He's a fucking monstrous hero. What were you going to say? You're, you're giving me the face. I started, I started to watch that with Eddie, and like 10 minutes in, I tuned out, and then it was like over, and I looked at him, and I go, what did we just watch? He, 
he spent months telling us Black Adam's going to change the DC universe. Black Adam, he's just, he's an anti-hero. He's, he kills people. He's this, he's that. He's, you're, you're never, you're not prepared for Black Adam. And then Black Adam shows up. And like when he comes to life out of the ground or whatever the fuck, also in Egypt, more fucking desert bullshit. And he fucking comes up and he's like, ha ha, I'm Black Adam. And he kills a bunch of dudes. He does. There's no doubt. He fucking wreaks havoc on everybody. And then there's a lady who steals a, I don't know, a charm, of course, or a briefcase, whatever the fuck, who cares? And she goes to her apartment house and then Black Adam has to follow her there. And he shows up and her 13 year old son is not alarmed at all by the gigantic man in a, in a black fucking spandex costume who's shown up to talk or kill his mom possibly and he immediately starts going you're so cool with your cool costume you should have a catchphrase you need a cape whatever and black adam who literally just killed a hundred terrorists in the desert who's been trapped in a in a rock i think for like a thousand years or whatever the fuck I don't know. He doesn't know. All of a sudden, this dude, again, the, I'm not joking, trapped in a rock for a thousand years. The last time he was alive, they didn't invent pants. Like, he doesn't even know what the fuck they are. All right, this dude, he lived in a land of sheets and sand <laughs> and people being sad and slaves. A lot of S's back then. Sheets, sand, and slaves. Sheets, sand, slaves, and sadness. There you go. I'm writing that down because that's the name of the show. Everybody, <laughs> hold on. Sheets, sand, slaves i, I want you sadness. to know that that sounds far too racist to put in the title of a show it's going in there well come on last week it was uncle henry hitler uncle henry hitler's hash house <laughs> um so and i actually had in my brain i go i think i named another show after hitler recently but i looked and it was like it was like a year ago i had a show called there's got to be a oh hitler. my god yeah. <gasps> Um, so fucking, so the black Adam lives a thousand years ago. And like I said, there's nothing but, but slaves digging for this particular, of course, a mineral like black Panther has uh vibranium and in, in, in black Adam, they have, you know, Viva vibranium. Like it's literally a, this worst rip off. And maybe it's from the comic book. I don't know. Okay. But, but, but all but, the, but, but they all did rip each other off. Yes. But, but now that you're making movies about it, then it's much more evident. You know what I mean? You have to do something yes. to try to fix it. Right. So, regardless. Yeah. So Black Adam, he lives a thousand years ago <laughs> in the, in this fucking, in the land of haboobs. You know what I mean? Like fucking just sandstorms and shit like that. That's a haboob is a fucking sandstorm. So then he comes out of the ground and he kills a hundred guys like right away. He's like, yes. Yeah. And then all of a sudden he meets a 13 year old boy. And this guy who lived a thousand years ago when they didn't even have milk, he goes, uh, he recognizes sarcasm. He knows what sarcasm is, and he makes sarcastic like quips with the 13-year-old kid. First, he kind of plays dumb, but then he says some things kind of back and forth, and he does sarcastic shit, and you're like, oh, come on. You can't, you can't give me both. You can't tell me this guy is this, is this killer from the past, and then he shows up, and he's fucking he's, he's Chandler Bing. I can't fucking have Chandler, Chandler Bing, Bing in a fucking cape killing people. I'm, we're all, because you know why? They're all fucking Chandler Bing now. Every single one of them. Every hero has some quippy bullshit. And I and I I look, when all of us are funny, none of us are funny. Could you I'm not putting on pajamas and fighting people's in alleys. Could you just leave the funny to me? Could you just let me be funny? You fucking dicks. Yeah, I brought it back to me. I, I cannot tell you how funny the Chandler Bing is because they're super friends. Yeah. <laughs> there's friends and there's super friends and never the twain shall meet all right the friends are sarcastic the super friends fuck people up i wouldn't want to see fucking chandler going out there and fucking cutting people up with a remark i don't want to see any of that shit let him work in an office and you're black adam go kill more terrorists and shit like that muted you're muted you're muted you're muted yeah. Can we please have the Super Friends comic book series happen? Because I would love to see them all sitting around the couch dealing with the monkey. Oh, man. I, I got to be. And Iron yeah. Man brings home. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll tell you this. I'm, I'm in this world we live in. I'm sure it's been done. I'm, oh, you can find it out there. Just it Google probably it. probably has. It's so fucking stupid. It's fucking wrong. So just, <laughs> just if you, if you have. The, the the point is, and again, it's not, it's, I don't know what, there's no point. There's no point. I, I just, soldier. but also Dave, let's finish Dave. Okay. Dave, Dave's got his podcast. 
<laughs> which again, don't don't you don't have to cross over, but he does now because that's what he does. Because also, Dave can't sing anymore. Now let, let me tell you this: uh, no one's told Dave that. <laughs> um, but Dave is Dave is. It's just rough. It's really really yeah. rough. <laughs> it was rough on their last tour. And Eddie just wanted to play with Wolf. And I think, and again, we, you know, Dave traveled in his own plane and Van Halen traveled in their own plane. And, you know what I mean? They all, everybody met. He didn't even go to sound check. Wow. He just showed up in time for the fucking show, man. They just, they just did it because that was what, you know, Wolf basically told Eddie, hey, man, the fans would love to see us do this. And so Eddie did it and they did it. Um, but the funny thing is like Dave, he wow. just he still thinks he's Dave. That's the thing that's like crazy, you know? And, and but so, but then that gets to this point, he puts out this podcast and it's all, you know, these amazing stories or whatever the fuck he's done. And also his, he, he paints verbal soundscapes. He just does where he's, you yeah. know, he, his voice is, he has an amazing voice. It's a good writer. Um, and, and he, he does, he wants to talk about, you know, he's just, he's an interesting guy. And is he nuts? Yes. <laughs> You know what? A lot of your interesting guys are fucking nuts. That's the point. If you find, you know, you got to have, there's, there's a, <laughs> there has to be a, a, an edge on a blade. All right. You know what I mean? Because once it gets dull, you can just put it in the drawer and forget yeah. about it. So that's not who he is. He's just, he's, and, and he's never accepted that about himself. Now, is it, it's a problem sometimes. It's not a problem for him. He doesn't give a fuck. He's got all the money in the world. Yeah. But sometimes as a fan, you're just kind of like, oh man, I, I wish you would age a little more gracefully you know what i mean and understand what's going on but also at the same time go live in japan and get yakuza tattoos there's nothing fucking wrong with it you're a millionaire you're, <laughs> Wait, you're a, uh, does he have does he have tattoos from japan you lily he literally his whole he's got a whole chest piece like his fucking I, again i haven't seen anything about diamond dave since i think i met him in florida in an elevator right well he, he which again perfect story sure <laughs> in he, an uh, elevator he yeah no he he came out uh, it was weird like i this is a couple of years ago his shirt like moved and you could see that he had ink and it was like whoa but then he came out with his shirt undone once on stage with the foo fighters and he has a full two full chest pieces from the shoulder wow, to that's the waist. amazing is yeah. it good art at least he lives in japan half the year yes it, it okay. is good art it's not he's not he doesn't have shitty jailhouse tattoos he's fucking yeah. david lee roth so and, yeah. and also i'll be honest with you i'm i would not be shocked if he got them done by somebody with a mallet and a chisel you know what i mean no, he's, one, sure. of those, he's yeah. one of those dudes he wants the authentic cool. experience exactly he does fucking awesome cool stuff and he's still doing awesome cool stuff in his old age or whatever the fuck but also yeah. Sometimes he's hiding in his dad's mansion in Pasadena, taking hanging out with his sister or whatever the fuck he's doing. Like, I, I would challenge. I've talked about this before. There's there's a great story about Dave that ran, um, got to be eight years ago now. It's it's a long time ago, and it's the most in depth story I've ever seen on Dave. And it's it's was it in Google it? It was it was it might have been even in like a Google Pasadena it. week. Well, not you Google it, but people. Yeah. But it's like it might have been in like a Pasadena newspaper or something. But it was a super fucking long story, and he was forthcoming. They talked to his sister at length. They talked about his family. He talked about Japan. He talked about you know, and it was it was very it wasn't you didn't get a lot yeah. of the whole hey man Toastmaster General for the immoral majority. I you may not go down <laughs> in history, but I will go down on your daughter. You know, you didn't get a lot of that. You got actually answers to questions. <laughs> Which was fucking cool. Like, I wanted to hear that. You know, that's the thing. He's an interesting guy. But also, I, I advanced this. You don't know anything about that fucking guy. None of us know anything about that I, guy. I'm sure that's true. Yeah. We 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 know. And, and so I will say this. Like, when you ask about the magic of the band, would the band have been as magical and, and done what it did without him? I think Eddie, of course, talent wins out. Eddie and Alex would have found a way. They would There would have been a way. Would they have been what they were? I don't think so. Certainly, it certainly would not have been... I mean, like, you could even go this route. Like, if you were to put the lead singer of Trickster in Van Halen, you know what I mean? They they would have been huge because they would have sold records and, and all that stuff. Yeah. But they wouldn't have been, we wouldn't have been talking about them 45 years later. Other yeah, because that perfect like, magic wasn't there of spectacle and talent. And spectacle that was the, often wanes fast. Yes, but if you, you know, if you, yeah, you can have, again, same thing with guitar work. You can go, well, there's Flash. I mean, again, I've talked on here many times about, michelangelo who is mike badio 
Um, he's a guitar player. He's ambidextrous. He literally has a guitar with two necks that he plays like at the same fucking time. And, and he's a guy who was in a band called Holland in Chicago. His name was Mike Badio. Then he changed his name to Michelangelo and he went and played in the, on the West coast. And I believe he was in nitro, a band. And he just, he's just one of the flashiest fucking guitar players in the world. He's still around now. Uh, he plays, he goes to Nam, he teaches classes and shit like that, but he's not revered in any way like Eddie was because yeah. Eddie became a giant. Eddie was a, a fucking yeah. monster. Steve Vai. Steve Vai is touring all the time. Steve Vai is respected and beloved, but he's still, it's funny. It's, I'm not saying he shouldn't be mentioned in the same breath as Eddie Van Halen, but it's funny because the main, if you ask people on the street, if you ask 10 people who Steve Vai was, you might get two people who knew, but if you ask people who I Eddie know the Van name. Halen was, yeah, well, he was, yeah. he took, he replaced when Dave went solo and Steve was his guitarist. That's why I know the name. Yeah. He's been, he's been, he was transcribing music for Frank Zappa when he was 17 at Berkeley. That's amazing. And then Frank took him on the road at fucking 17. I mean, Frank Zappa took you on the road and then let you arrange. I mean, he he's a fucking master. Steve Vai awesome. is an absolute genius and seems like the coolest fucking guy in the world. Uh, and he's married to a, a woman named Pia who was in a band, uh, Vixen. Uh, remember Vixen from the 80s? I he's do. He's married. Yeah, he's Pia, Pia Vai is his wife. And he's, you know, he's got, some, I follow him. I follow his in social media. That's why I know so much about him. Is he on Facebook? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> he probably is. But also, but he's also viable. Like he's on Instagram and he posts I'm, I'm almost teasing. every day. Yes. I, I Again, you know, people are mad that Madonna's going on tour. And I'm just like, so what? <laughs> Boy, did, yeah, but did you sit through that fucking horrible black and white piece of shit that she did with fucking Amy Schumer and Jack Black? Did you see that fucking thing? Well, see, there are three people in that and two of them I have no interest in seeing anything they do. So, what? oh my god. I, I, say the two people and get ready to fight. Not Madonna. <laughs> um again, Jack Black is not for me. Oh. I I get it. I think he's talented, but it's just not for me and Amy Schumer is everything I hate about um being a white woman. <laughs> wow. <laughs> oh Jesus. I don't know how else to say that. <laughs> um, you know, we all make mistakes. We all are imperfect, whatever. But um, I have yet to sit down and watch a lot of her stuff and go, it doesn't feel very deep or poignant in a lot of what she does, although she's trying good for her. And that's, you know, and again, like them both, I don't care. It's not my, but, you know, when I hear all of that, I'm like, that's probably not for me. Yeah. Well, she... I like Madonna as Madonna. I like the way she creates and the way her thought process works sometimes. But again, you know, Dolly Parton's doing a rock album. The world you, changes and I sit here. But do you, do you like the fact that Madonna looks like the Michelin man these days? I it, don't care what women look like. If they're happy with the way they look, that's all that matters. I don't know. If she's happy. I think it's why she's done this to herself. What I'm saying though, is it is not for me to say she does or does not look good. That is how she looks, whether it is self done or not, whatever, I, you know, there are people who enjoy tattoos and there are people who think tattoos are wrong and gross. There are people who think breast implants are terrible. There are people who, and I'm like, look, if Madonna wants to fill her face full of filler, get two hip replacements, two knee replacements and go out on tour because she likes to tour and she can still sing, buy a fucking ticket and enjoy it. All of her shows have been spectacles. Uh, good for her. I yeah. she just, she just absolutely <clears throat> looks like she's been consistently stung by bees. Okay. I, you know, I, look at Kathleen Turner. She was on steroids for years and it what changed the, fuck the way she to looks. Turner? I know, I love that. <laughs> but, you know, it's funny. Kathleen Turner has rheumatoid arthritis. And what the fuck happened to Kathleen Turner was mismanagement of health care. Yeah, she got rheumatoid arthritis. Look, I, and, we grow and, and we learn. The way, yes. So, but at the same time, I, I regard I, Jack Black is so for me. And good. Amy. Amy, not Good. for me. There's no doubt. Amy's not yeah. for me either. But so I, I don't. But again, you're like it was a piece of shit, and I'm like, yeah. Well, no, we'll, we'll, I right. won't go watch it anyway. For this me, is, it's not good. I, I watched. I literally watched a minute. Okay. I'm not joking. I didn't watch the whole thing because again, yeah. the way it opened, I was like, this is cringeworthy, bad, fucking embarrassing. I, I, and she's above that. To me, I think that she should be better than. And so everybody's this gets allowed to, to fail. Which you're exact, but this gets to what we're talking about with Dave. Yeah. Okay. You know. Everybody projects who they want them to be. And Absolutely. then that person carves their own path and they are who they want to be. And people then get angry or resentful of them and point and laugh or make fun. And I know it's wrong. It is. There's it no is, doubt. Yeah. 
and and so that's what I'm saying is people hang. So I I click the comments. We'll get to Madonna in a second, but I click the comments for Dave his podcast, and people are like, "Ah, uh, Dave, this is awesome. We need you back in the studio, man. Dave, you got to make a rock album, bring rock music back. Dave, you got to. Oh my God, you know what? Radio's crying out for you, Dave. It's you're, you're a voice in the wilderness. They need to hear. And and you're just like, how delusional are all of you? Like, do you not? follow do you not understand where where music has gone where trends have gone where the world has gone so here's the thing if, oh. if you want my opinion on this people are allowed to like what they like and if they want dave to record music that they're going to enjoy even if it's not as good as it used to be okay i'm aware of that but what people are really typing is make me young again please well that is very true <laughs> that's it that that that's all that they, they're not saying they're not like because look if those people then went to see dave in concert and dave played a new song they would go get a fucking margarita and hit the bathroom yeah. so don't pretend that you're dying for the new material that dave can shoot out there when reality what you're saying is please make me young again can you please make me young again i'm going remember to when right we were now. young <laughs> it's the truth have you seen the cruel world lineup Oh, with yeah, I, I did. Susie actually. and yeah. and you know the vapors for Christ's sake, the motels, Adam Ant. Adam Ant. I literally was like, Eddie, I want to go to this so badly, and then I had to go to their ADA page to see if it was even possible for me to go. And then I'm like, ah, oh, it's 150 dollars to feel young again, and it's going to take three days, and I'm going to have to park in a special area and wheel over. And oh my God, I'm old. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I just went, wow, I really want to go to this concert, but there is no way I can go to this concert. And I am deeply saddened by that yeah. because the world sucks. And I am also deeply saddened that the days of me seeing these bands are over. And good for the people who can afford Madonna tickets. Good for the people who can afford to go see Diamond Dave again. Good for the people who will go see, you know, I, I'm happy for them, but man. Yeah. Well, when you I want to be young too. <laughs> you're like, I, I'm going to park in a special area and then I got to wheel over. Yeah. You're parking next to the vapors. I, I mean, it's like, <laughs> that's, that's another truth that we need to verbalize. Yeah. All of these people are your age. It's not, you know what I mean? It's like, well, my age or older. You know, yeah. so it's, you know, when you, when you grow up with a band, they're usually a little bit older than you. So it's yeah. like, I'm, I'm also sitting there going, I just turned 57, which means pretty much everybody on this tour is 60 plus. It could be sponsored by AARP. Sure. And, and honestly, but, I wish it was <laughs> because there would be better AD, 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 AD real, thing. Real quick. Let's talk about a AARP. Uh, I joined it when I was eligible or whatever, whenever yeah. the fuck that was. Okay. Well, now they keep sending me shit the all the magazines. time. They want me to do live insurance. They want to do magazines. They want to do life insurance. They all this shit. They're coming after me. But now, like I thought, I just joined here. All right, and again, I this is a part of being old, I suppose. I thought I just joined the fucking thing, and I was in it, and I was in it forever. You know what I mean? Like, no, whatever, it's fifteen dollars like, a year. That's the things I thought like being like social yeah. security. Like I, I I now qualify for AARP, and I'm in it. So now they're sending me letters where they want money. Yeah. And I'm like, did I send them money the first time? I don't even remember if I sent the money the first fucking time. What What's funny is if you go to Denny's enough, you'll get your fifteen dollars back. <laughs> I, I, there's no doubt. I'm just saying, first taste is free. Yeah. I wonder if I wonder if Arp gave me it for free for a while, yeah. and then went, hey, hey, you geezer, cough up this fifteen bucks. But I'm always shocked at who's on the cover of the magazine, and I'm like, I'm old, right? But but also, and that's the thing is, it'll be someone where you'll be like, wait, wait a minute, why is Kevin Costner on this magazine? I he's a movie star. He shouldn't be on the old people's Twilighting magazine. This is literally just the it's it's just you should every page should just be a sunset in the <laughs> ARP magazine. There shouldn't ever be a person or an article, anything at all. It should just be beautiful sunsets. Because guess what? <laughs> that's where you're at. That's what it should be. The rest of the rest of the, every page in the magazine should just be a beautiful. You just page through it and go, ah, ah. <laughs> so I'm looking at the clock on the wall right now. Um, and we are about 30 minutes away from our out time. And this is me being radio producer Lily right now. Wow, we right. still have to talk about. <laughs> oh, Christ. We will get this stuff. Sure. Um, so so that my point is with Dave, that's the thing is these people, yeah. they treat him like he's and again, in their mind's eye, he's still the Toastmaster General of the Immoral Majority. There's no doubt. But but in reality, he's he's a 68-year-old man who spends half his time in Japan and half his time in America. And you really, 
like I said, people don't really know anything about him. Like, can you tell me, can you tell me one person he's dated in his entire career? I remember I mean, him being connected to someone, but for the most part, it was always a different woman every he, year. He's well, or was it? He was always an extremely private dude, and there was always these kind of anonymous women there who were like photographed pictures. with. Yeah, there were pictures of him out with someone and, and speculation. Right. Yeah, well, I mean, there's a there's a fucking awesome picture of him with Stevie Nicks, which is which yeah. is just fucking beautiful. But I mean, he was a rock star. He made his way around all these things. Yeah. Again, there's there's always been rumors about his choices in his personal life and all that stuff. But he's he's always even though you know that you know Bozy Bozy Bop, you know that guy, right? But you don't know anything about David Lee Roth. I mean, well, really, I can tell you, really, if it came out tomorrow that he has been with a man for the last thirty years, I would go. That probably tracks. Sure. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. It's it's yeah. just a, it's it's astonishing because he has we that all... Liberace oh, flair sure. to him. So yeah, I mean, <laughs> and and you know what's funny? His fans would be angry at you for saying that, and he would love you for saying yeah, that. because he he, he recognizes showman. He recognizes it. showman. He knows. Yes. Yes. Barry so, Manilow was the same way too. But like and... his but his meatball denim jacket fans would be like, "How dare you fucking say fucking Liberace? Fucking Dave is so fucking rock star." And and Dave would just be like, "Nope, she got it. She absolutely got it. I, I threw I it and she caught it." Yeah, I I think about Tom of Finland and how everybody was like, "No, he's just a big muscle man," and we're all like, oh, "He's a gay <laughs> icon." Um, you know, <laughs> it's. Manly more, men it, are not necessarily manly men for women. Is it more so, worrisome? Is it more worrisome that you've mentioned Tom from Finland or that I know who Tom from Finland is? <laughs> that I know. Well, I hope people know. Incredible, incredible artwork. Yeah, it, it it's mind boggling, quite frankly. But it also, uh, it looks like I, I'll. I think I've told this story on here before. Um, you know, when I was a little kid, I uh, <laughs> I I told this story. I lived in Chicago. And we found a bunch of porn in the alley like one time. I mean, and I mean, like it and it framed who it, it truthfully like I can literally I don't think I have a photographic memory. I think my ex-wife had a photographic memory because she could literally drive anywhere and knew where she was going all the time. Like she knew everything. Um, but I I can I don't know what a photographic memory truly is like because I don't have it all the time. Yeah. But I can right now see exactly what happened when I was a kid on a, on. I don't know the date. But yeah. if I'm thinking of the time that we found all the porn in the in the alley behind the house at 3359 South Bell and I couldn't we pulled even it tell out, you an address. Yeah, I I know all my old I know a bunch of old phone numbers 8862449. I mean I I, do, I know a lot of that stuff it just stays in my brain. Yeah. But like we found all this porn and uh the they because I could read when I was a kid yeah, I could read. Yeah, you know, I told you I was reading newspapers when I was like one and a half, two years old. I was reading yeah. about Vietnam and I was pronouncing things correctly. My parents were like, what the fuck? We've got a prodigy on our hands. Here's what we should do. I'll get drunk and fight with you and then we'll get a divorce <laughs> and never make anything of him. Uh, what if we didn't support him at all in any of his endeavors? That'd be great. You had a choice when your dad died Yawn. and you made that choice not sure. to put the pajamas on. <laughs> You're damn right. It was there. It was right there for me. Well, you know why? Because there were no alleys in the suburbs. <laughs> If my dad had died in Chicago, there was plenty of alleys. I'm, you know, and also I go to the alley to punch a guy. I find a bag of porn. I wind up reading all the kids in the neighborhood. That's the problem. So that's what happened. We found a bag, a bag, giant bag of porn. And I mean, like not, not like Playboy. I'm talking like we. It was like gynecological, fucking straight up pink shots. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like fucking and a lot of hair that I didn't know why it was there. And a lot. I mean, I remember being confused by the images. And it was sex. It was like, it wasn't just naked yeah. people. It was people having sex. And then they, the guys in the neighborhood, like older kids or whatever, I was reading them. They made me read the stuff out loud. So I was reading porn to them out loud. I'm, you know, four and I'm reading porn, pornographic stuff. I was probably five. It was 72. And I'm reading stuff out loud, like in the alley, like reading porn. And we found it and they hit it. And then they made me do it like for days and days. I would come out and read it was almost like it reminds me of the groove tube when the clown makes everybody leave the fucking room and he, and he reads fucking uh, Lady yeah. Chatterley's Lover, I think, out loud. And, and then he goes, all right, bring your kids. You bring your parents back in. It was like that when I was a kid. <laughs> but also getting to Tom of Finland. Yeah. Uh, when I lived in Romeoville, um, <laughs> this is after we moved from from Chicago. This is where this was where my full, you know, my mom would work. 
we had to hide in the house from the fucking tr- the the social services because my mom was on welfare but also yeah. working um and my mom fought mrs crumb in the street and we had the bb gun fights mr magic like every, this is my this is when i was like 10 11 12 yeah okay uh, we actually moved there when I was nine. So it was nine until, and then we moved, whatever, so nine to 12. So it's those years. All right. Next door was Carol. And I've mentioned Carol. That was who was pregnant when my mom yeah. went out to defend her. Well, Carol was married to a guy named Mike. And Mike was a prison guard in Joliet. He was a prison guard at Stateville. Jesus. Uh, and so he was... Uh, you know, Carol was from West Virginia and she didn't mind tipping a few and Mike was a prison guard and he was in Joliet and they were rough and they would, you would hear screaming and fighting. And, and I don't mean like, and Carol wasn't like the shrinking violet who was yeah. like, Oh, please help me. She fucking gave what she was getting. Yeah. But they stayed together and whatever. So one time we were in Mike and Carol's house and uh, we were just fucking around, whatever comic books, playing Atari, whatever. And we found a stash of paperbacks. So no pictures in the paperbacks, but from the drawings on the covers of the paperbacks, <laughs> we had a pretty good idea that this was not something we were supposed to find. So immediately we dove in and we started reading them, we started to look at them. And uh, I will tell you now that uh, the drawings on the covers of these these books were Tom of Finland guys, like two muscly dudes in leather jackets standing outside of a bathroom and like a, a, a smaller muscle guy walking out and them looking at him. And it was called, you know, stuff like, uh, you know, wrong place, wrong time. You know what I mean? Like that was the yeah. titles of the books. And uh, and I was like, what? I didn't again, I'm 10 so you're reading it and they were hardcore yeah gay paperback novels and it turned out that that was part of the contraband that he would hold or sell in the prison for the because he was uh i i found out much later um (laughs) he wasn't he wasn't like the uh the guidance counselor of 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 prison guards <laughs> he he survived in a world that uh needed you to do certain things to survive but also yeah. he wasn't averse to those things as i found out later when i think i told this story i wound up living in california and uh i was reading the orange county register and he uh, was involved in a jewelry store robbery with like four other guys his name and i couldn't believe it was it was carol's husband and I called my mom and I'm like, is this real? And she's just like, wow, I didn't know he was in California. Yeah, that's him. And then I, <laughs> and then I because then I read the names and she's just like, oh yeah, Dutch and Bobby. And yeah, that's his, that was his part of his crew. He know those guys. And I'm like, cause I told you, as I've said before, I, my mom lived a life that I, yeah. you know, I, I mean, she confessed to a murder under anesthesia. I mean, whatever the fuck. <laughs> so whatever she had going on is fine, but I'm saying, so anyway, getting back to the whole reason of telling the story was I read those, we were reading those hardcore gay novels as kids, because I'm I'm 10 years old reading them. And that was that. So the Tom of Finland guys were on the cover. And, uh, and that's why I kind of know that imagery. Like I know what it yeah. was. Cause then later on, you know, you grow up and you got the internet and all of a sudden I'm like, who the fuck are those guys? Oh no, wrong place, wrong time. <laughs> <laughs> and it turns out it's the Tom of Finland guys. So I'm like, oh, all right. It's like an old friend has come back into my life and terrified me once more. Oh, good. Someone else, someone else from my past has shown up and destroyed me with memories I shouldn't possibly have. <laughs> Again, childhood trauma did not lead to superhero. <laughs> oh, right? I went the wrong way. God damn it. My, I think I, I, I you know feel what? bad. Go ahead. I, no, I said Black Adam didn't have any sarcasm. I went the other way. I became superhero of sarcasm. <laughs> I, if I was, if I, there should be like some cool ass name where I was like, you know, the fucking quipster or one of those assholes. You know what I mean? Just, well, they already got the Joker and the fucking Riddler. Who could I be? I don't even know. Well, I think, I think I have to head downtown to the garment district where the place is that will make luchador masks for you. I will just take them, the 40 year old boy logo, and we will get you a lovely mask made of the 40 year old boy with the, with the little uh, horns. Then we'll get you in a black onesie with a sweatshirt over it. And, how is, um, 
How is this idea 10 years late? <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> because I'm not so everybody mad. has their pivotal moment when they're 18 years old and if the trauma was, happens. But if I was 45 and I had this idea, you know what? Yeah, I would go tomorrow and I'd be in fucking alleys <laughs> doing fucking handsprings. Let's fucking do this, man. I'm There's still time. Up. You can oh. punch a car right now. No one's going to stop you. <laughs> No, that's and that's even truer. That's an even so truer sad. thing. Good lord! Oh, I, oh yeah. I have to tell you, if I had the extra money, I would go do that right now just to see do it. Do you know how badly now I want a forty-year-old boy luchador mask? Like I oh. absolutely want it. I fucking want. It. Did now I ever tell a, you the story how Eddie got his with his clown makeup? No, I've Eddie has it. a luchador mask with his clown makeup oh. from Ringling incredible he was downtown and he was hanging out talking with somebody this guy goes no i make i make masks that's what i make and he's like really okay here's a picture can you make that and the guy goes sure tuesday 40 bucks and then he's like here and he's like yeah so we left we came back and then he's like i'm going we'll see what happens you know yeah. and the next thing i know he comes home with a bunch of masks with all of his oh no all right well let me ask you this and and i'm i'm completely serious why did he take it off? <laughs> You're so muted. Where they can't hear you cracking up. It's hard to do a magic show. No. Wearing a mask with no mask. No. All I, see, that that's the issue also. Yeah. I will say this. If I was, like, I would never stop being Spider-Man. Like, if there's no, if I become a superhero, like, if I'm Peter Parker, and I'm like, wait a minute, <laughs> I can do spider shit and wear a spider outfit? Why would you ever go back to being a grad student or whatever the fuck? Why would you ever go back to high school? Fuck that. I would be, it, it would, you would just be the, you'd drop out and everybody like, why did Peter Parker drop out? I'd be like, oh, what a loser. You'd be like, oh, really? Well, watch this bullshit. And he throws a car at somebody. That's fucking amazing. I think, I think with great responsibility or with great power comes great responsibility. That's why. Ooh. That's why you want to make the world a better place when you have power and you don't turn into Jeff Bezos or Mark Zuckerberg. Oh, Christ. Let's not bring them into it for fuck's sake. They're not wearing. Capes. Look, they had the option to be Iron Man and instead they wanted to be Lex Luthor. That is a choice. It's funny you mention Iron Man. <laughs> <laughs> Because that was the point in the movie. That was the that's what started all this bullshit. Spider Man or Iron Man, again, like I said, Batman's dad was killed in an alley. Superman's dad died any number of ways. Uncle this would ben, be a great song, by the way. Batman's was, dad died in an alley. Batman's died in an alley. Um, and Superman's uncle was killed. Uh, all right, let's talk about this too. Peter Parker well, was an orphan. Peter Parker was an orphan, right? Yes. And uh, and then he was raised by his Uncle Ben and his Aunt May. And then his Uncle Ben was killed after fucking Spider-Man went and wrestled Randy Savage and whatever the fuck. <laughs> Bonesaw is ready. And uh, sure enough, then Uncle Ben gets gunned down and Spider-Man's sad. But then, so that happens, right? In my youth, that happens in my comic books. I'm like, all right, well, that's a drag and that sucks. But I understand Spider-Man, great power, responsibility, all that bullshit. So then I get older and I wind up in a comic book store. I'm just, you know, just thumbing around because they used to, I've done comic books, shows in comic books, like yeah. remember fucking Meltdown and stuff. Yep. Well, but even before that, if you'd kill in time on the road, you know, Mike Toomey and I would go look for action figures. Like there were certain ones we, we would, we made it a game. Like in every city, we'd try to find one guy, you know what I mean? And, and we'd go to thrift stores sometimes. Like I've told the story many times about how we were making fun. There were these two nerds in a comic book store and they're talking about, you know, you know, who's tougher, this guy or that, whatever. And we're like, Mike and I are just like, look at these fucking idiots. And then as we are walking away, the guy goes, hey, is that a speed racer on your keychain?" <laughs> Mike's just like, oh, God, I'm just I'm these guys. I, you know, we pretended we were cooler. We yep. weren't cooler at all. Not at nope. all. And nope. so I'm thumbing around in one of those bookstores and uh, I pick up a Spider-Man because, again, Spider-Man is my guy. And I pick it up and. um Spider-Man's parents are alive and they're spies and they worked for the government. In reality, they were just, they were like, they were in some fucking witness, I, whatever, the, whatever. It didn't matter. I didn't read the story. All I saw was the cover. And, and I was like, Spider-Man's parents are alive. Like I said, it out loud. <laughs> I was so traumatized by it. Spider-Man's parents are alive. I find this out 12 years later. And the guy's just like, yeah, they're spies and the government took them. And he starts to explain. And I mean, I just went catatonic. Like, I didn't even fucking listen. Because out of my brain, I'm like, is nothing true? <laughs> no. 
is there is there not one bedrock that I can rest upon that will not crumble beneath me and leave me hoisted upon my own petard? What is happening? How the fuck are Spider-Man's parents alive? But that's the bullshit they do in comic books. The fucking Joker is pregnant. I'm not joking. I'm not kidding. What? You think I'm kidding? Literally, two weeks ago, they have a storyline now. I don't know if it's some bullshit crossover quantum leap. I, I don't know. But the Joker is pregnant. Like I saw the picture in the panels from the book where he's like got a he's got a he's gonna have a baby like and I don't know if he's a he I don't know if he trans I don't know the rules I don't know what the fuck yeah happened. I don't I haven't that's but I know the Joker is pregnant and I saw it and I was and it, and once I and again it was one of those things the same thing or I saw it I just went I'm there's no point in even finding out why this is happening well, I mean <laughs> you know what I mean because it's look it's not like the Joker's really pregnant and he's gonna have a baby and then they're gonna transition to a a real like a real life comic where the joker raises a son i mean you know what i mean it's not they're not gonna do that shit it's some gimmickly gimmicky garbage that they just fucking do they always do this like yesterday with the m&ms that bullshit all right fucking, i don't know all right what happened with m&ms well oh, for, no. I, like two weeks ago they invented there was chick m&ms there's like lady m&ms they put out like a purple bag of supporting women and the money i don't know if part of the money goes to some woman's whatever the fuck it's, okay and again it's all Good for them. It's all marketing a, to get yes, make money for big corporations. To get people to buy candy to kill them. It, that, that's it. Good for them. <laughs> you know, hey, hey, our diabetes now supports ladies. I'm in. <laughs> Let's fucking do it. I can't wait. So you're like, fuck it. So everybody eats the fuck ton out of M&Ms because now they're nice to chicks. And it's like, all right, good for them. So, all right. So that happens. And, of course, the other idiots, the fucking on the other side, they get mad. They're, they're mad because the M&Ms are ladies or the, the M&Ms have a purse. I, I don't know what the, I don't know. <laughs> the it's M&Ms all so incredibly fucking stupid. It's so fucking stupid. It's like, these guys are like, oh man, I, why I wanted fuckable M&Ms. I mean, that, that's like literally <laughs> the bottom line. They wanted fuckable M&Ms or they're too it fat. Is, or, that is the truth. It's so fucking stupid. So all of it, all of it is dumb. And it's all all of the people who are like, yay, they support ladies. I want to get diabetes. And then the other side who are like, I wanted to fuck these M&Ms. What the fuck? <laughs> who cares? It's all dumb. So so I just literally, you just see it and you just scroll. You're like, goodbye. And I could not be less. <laughs> but there are people who will invest their whole fucking day in fighting about it. Like, well, the yellow M&M represents freedom. Shut the fuck <laughs> up. Go jump off a fucking cliff. What is wrong with you fucking people? Don't you see how stupid it is? So sure enough. Yesterday, the M&Ms put out a press release <laughs> and they're like, hey, man, uh, we're getting rid of the M&Ms, all of them, the chicks, the fucking dudes, all the M&Ms. And now Maya Rudolph is the spokesperson for M&Ms. <laughs> and I, I'm not totally against that. I like Maya Rudolph. Overall. I like I, dude. <laughs> Maya Rudolph is terrific. OK, <laughs> but but in reality. How do you that this is where it's a marketing fucking thing again? It's another it marketing thing, and also the Super Bowl is in fucking three weeks. Yes, so they're gonna do some commercial where Maya Rudolph then quits and the M and M's come in and it's all it's that's what it is. And this whole thing is to trick people like me into talking about this into a fucking microphone. I get it, <laughs> and that's what happened. And here we are. Yes, yesterday. <laughs> But yesterday, but I'm talking about it like because I I'm yeah. I'm the I'm the guy on the side who's wryly winking, going ha ha, I get it, yeah. which is stupid too because I'm still talking about it. Yeah. But yesterday, people were mad. People were mad at M and M's. They're furious. I can't believe you you caved to the G the GQP and right wing and all this shit. And I'm just like, oh you fuckheads! Don't you realize in two weeks they're gonna pull the rug out from under you and the M and M's are coming back? Will you then be joyful? And as as bitterly angry as you are now, will you high five and hug and celebrate? Will you kiss a nurse in Times Square when the M and M's come back in two weeks? You fucking idiots! What is wrong with people? Why would you care? Like the Oscars last night, the Oscars uh, this morning, the Oscars came out this morning. Okay, oh, the Oscar nominations. I missed and, that uh, too. <laughs> Well, I, uh, <laughs> I've had a bad day. I've had a bad two days. I'm not going to well, lie. Yeah, for people pounding on the reasons. door, bringing no, all sorts of fucking medicine. other stuff. Well, I'm sorry to hear that. It's okay. Things are good. So I, I kind of have missed a lot of what's happening. In well, the Oscar nominations right came out today. Yeah. And I think everything everywhere all at once got like 16 nominations or something. A, a ton. A fuck ton. Banshees of Inisherin got a ton. 
Uh, All Quiet on the Western Front got a ton. I will tell you this, uh, and again, I'm going to play right into their hands because they, I, it's just awards. And as we talked, things are, it's good for people to like things and, and I yeah. hope you like what you like. But I was very worried. There's a movie I just saw recently called RRR. Okay. We've talked about it here on the show. Yeah. It is magic. It is an Indian film. It's about three hours long. It's set in pre uh, revolution India. Yeah. Still colonized by the British. And it's a fable about two warriors on different sides and what they have to go through. And it's joyful. It's music. It's color. It's, it's an explosion of a movie. It is so It is, it is a, it is the pop rocks in Coke of movies. It is fucking amazing. Mentos in Coke. Mentos. It's the Mentos in Coke. I like of pop movies. rocks too. Uh, it's so lovely and it makes you happy and sad and cry and cheer. It is everything you should want in a, in a movie experience. Okay. And I was very, I was, I admit there's still the part of me that's like, cause like, I don't want to care about this shit. I do, but I don't like the Razzies came out yesterday. The Razzies are bullshit. Who the fuck are you? Nobody's to tell anybody they're bad actors and they make bad movies. Fuck you. Create something. Okay. But now I'm about to rip yeah. people apart and that's what I fucking do. Whatever. So I was worried that RRR was going to be placed in the international best international film category because it's from India and it's in Hindi or a a Hindi dialect. And I was like, this is a best picture nom. It it has to be a best picture nominee. You can't, you can't put it just in international uh, because it's bigger than that. It's just, it's a phenomenon. It's, it's unbelievable. So I just happened to be awake this morning at five 30 and I was going to go to bed and I was like, you know what? They're fucking announcing these. Why don't I just fucking stay up? So I did. I watched uh, Riz Ahmed, who I, I'm unfamiliar with his work, and then Allison Williams, who I just saw in a movie called Megan. And uh, I watched the two of them as they announced all of the, you know, the awards. Yeah. And they announced them in a certain order. Of course, Best Picture is going to be last and all this stuff. Well, then they get to the Best International Picture, and they name the nominees, and they didn't nominate RRR. And I was fucking thrilled because it was it meant it's a best picture. You know what I mean? It's like I was so happy they saw clear to not put it in uh, but, what what is essentially a junior category in the Oscars. It shouldn't be, but it's looked upon. It's given away. You know, it's given away an hour and a half into the show. It's not the big closer. It's not the big uh, RRR. I was so thrilled because it deserves to be represented among the best picture nominees, even even to just show the clips with the other best picture nominees will yeah. t- make other people take notice of it. Cause there are people there at parties, they're eating fucking, you know, mozzarella sticks. They're not paying attention to the international movie. Cause they're like, I don't know those people. They got umlauts. You know what I mean? Nobody wants to fucking listen to an umlaut guy. So they're like, fuck this. I'm trying to eat a snack. But then at the end, everybody goes, shh, 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 put down your mozzarella sticks. There's no, the umlauts have left the room and then they give away whatever the fuck they give away. Right. So I was, I was fucking juiced. I was, I was actually very happy because I, I, I can't something. stress enough. Yeah, because RRR is amazing. And also, it's an Indian filmmaker. There's a clip going around now on social media of James Cameron talking to him for like three solid minutes about what an amazing experience he had at his film. Not even just like, you know, boy, technically, whatever. It, he's just going, I, he goes, because the story, RRR, it stands for three different things, and there's fire and heat and water, and it's, it's just incredible the way it's done. And Cameron's saying that to him like a fan. He's just reading, and the guy... Because the guy is first, the clip starts with him going, I've seen everything you've done and Titanic, the Terminators and Avatar. They're just un- incredible. And then James Cameron goes, oh, really? And then vomits praise all over this guy for three minutes. It's fucking amazing. So this guy validated this guy. And again, not validated. He's doing his life's work and he's making amazing art. And, and he's that's respected. Good. But yeah, but still awards are awards they do mean something to a certain yeah extent. they get you more they get you more work when you're yes, nominated. like like when when fucking parasite won it was a big deal for bong jung who perhaps is his name i hope i don't remember yeah something like that but parasite's a fucking fantastic movie and i and so that led people to go all right they're starting to respect international art as well and they're not just buttonholing it uh or pigeonholing it into international films you know, that well, kind of I, I don't understand the distinction of what would be in the international category or in the best film category. There's got to be some sort of criteria that you would be in one or the other or possibly both. All right. Well, well, I'm about to tell you that. Right, okay. There, the, it's just considered best movie made in another country. 
Okay. Released in that in the country of its origin or released mm-hmm. there because you know a, a movie from Poland was nominated, a movie from Germany was okay. nominated. But for best picture overall, that can be from anywhere. But traditionally, it's been the United States. Yes, because okay. there is a movie called All Quiet on the Western Front, which is yeah. a German production. Yeah. This year is nominated in the international category and best picture. Okay, cool. I I don't again, know if it's I don't know the criteria. Yeah. I'm not a member of the Academy. So so I don't know if that's a first to be nominated in both. Okay, but I was still very happy when RRR wasn't nominated internationally because it meant, thankfully, it's going to get the best picture yeah. bump. You know what I mean? Because people do tend to look at the international yeah. picture as a junior award, essentially, even though it is still an Oscar. And uh, and then they announced the 10 pictures for best picture. And RRR is not nominated. And neither of the lead actors are nominated. And. It didn't even get like technical. It got nominated for best original song, which it should because the segment where that song plays is is fucking. You want to high five everybody you've ever met. It is such a gorgeous Bollywood fucking huge yeah. dance production. It is so beautiful, and so when I saw it was nominated for song, I was like, "Natu Natu" is the name of the song, and it's so fucking great. But when I saw it wasn't nominated, I, I was I just sat there and I was like, "What are we doing?" They, because they nominated. Look, I haven't seen Spielberg's movie, the story about his mom and dad. Good for him. But he also got like he got like thirteen nominations today, like director and all this kind. Of, the guy didn't even get nominated for director for RRR. Um, and and also it's funny. There's there's so the, the whole reason I was bringing this up was about like the M and M's about people getting outraged. Yeah. Over something that that is designed to outrage them, like literally they just they you all ate every skittle until you got trapped under the box. You, yeah. You know what I mean. So with the Oscars, the same thing where I I started to see people arguing about the snubs and stuff like that. But then it got weird, like because people are arguing about snubs. Like I personally, like I said, RRR, I could talk about it for a fucking another two hours. But also there's an actress named Mia Goth who's in Pearl, who gives this performance that if you watch it, you you will be right. you will sit there with your mouth hanging open. You'll be like, this is the most stunning thing I've ever seen on a yeah. movie screen. And she wasn't even there was no hype even like didn't even. She wasn't even mentioned, but there was there was an outside contender that people were talking about for for best actress. Uh, all of a sudden, in the last two weeks, people started to talk about a woman named Andrea Risebrow. And she is in a movie called To Leslie. Now, Andrea Risebrow is, uh, I believe, an English actress. She's in she was in Mandy. Did you right. see Nicholas Cage's Mandy? Yeah. OK, she's she's Mandy. OK. okay. And I watched Mandy. Uh, and I saw it at Fearful Jesuit's house, actually. I could not take my eyes off of her. Yeah, I, I remember like, you telling me about that. What yeah. is it about her that she she has some weird mystical? Because also Mandy, I think Mandy might say fucking 500 words in the entire movie. She she's But she's so, it, the, in the movie, Mandy, a guy drives by and looks at Mandy and is immediately obsessed and goes, I want her. And I went, yeah, I could see that. She, and she's wearing like a Black Sabbath T-shirt and smoking okay. and reading a paperback, but it doesn't matter. You you yeah. can't. There's something about her where you're just astonished by her, and I, and that's full credit to Andrea Risebrow. I don't know what she brought to it, but she's got that. So then I became fascinated by her, and then she's in Nocturnal Animals. She plays Michael Sheen's wife. She's in it's a very small part, but you, again, same thing, completely stands out. So then Ed Norton, the the uh, actor, not the plumber. He tweeted out, um, <laughs> so stupid. He tweeted out like two weeks ago. He was like, listen, he goes, I don't, I don't usually talk about other actors and their work. Maybe I should more, but, uh, I have to shout out Andrea Risebrow for her performance in two Les- to Leslie. No one has reached the depth of emotion and that I've seen and like whatever he raved about it. And Ed cool. Norton, again, because he doesn't yeah. say stuff like that often. Yeah. immediately people were like oh really so it became a big you know kind of to do and i i watched the movie uh i would recommend you see it okay. i don't i don't want to i don't want to talk you know i don't want to tell too much about it it's a very small film so we all have homework we all need to watch it and we'll talk about it next week watch to leslie that would be really because again she's now nom- okay. she, she got nominated this morning okay so she became nominated so even though i didn't get my mia goth i was happy to see andrea risebrow get nominated but you know who isn't happy about that? Uh, the internet. And by the internet, I mean the nameless, faceless people who become enraged and angered by anything that doesn't go the way they think it should. 
But then, like I said, it got weird because I started to read. And again, I don't know why this does this. <laughs> I don't know if I don't know if we need a war or something to keep these people busy. I, I don't I'm not sure. They were claiming that it was racist that Andrea Risebrow was nominated. And they and people have this whole they've come up with this entire backstory, this entire explanation that the only reason people started to talk about Andrea Risebrow for the last two weeks was to make sure that these black actresses didn't get nominated for Till and uh, everything, and that Michelle Yeoh doesn't win for everything. Like they all claimed that it was white privilege for this woman to be praised for her work because it was being used as a battering ram to keep other black and Asian women out of being nominated for their work. And I, I just, I'm reading it going, what, how, how many. So here, the Academy is a membership where they vote upon themselves. And in his, historically speaking, uh, they've been pretty fucking racist. No doubt. Um, so I am not surprised by a theory that comes out like that in any way, shape or form. I think it does a disservice to this actor who that, that's people what I'm talking did about. like, but at the same time, who knows what would have happened if people weren't bias but but my point is i guess we've reached a point i guess where you're everybody's guilty by suspicion you know what i mean or, or, you know, i i suppose because like you said four years certainly there's no doubt uh black actresses were underrepresented yeah. asian actors and uh, were underrepresented uh black actors all of them yes and and i think do i think some strides have been made in that uh I think yeah, only, absolutely. I think the advent of the internet and screeners being allowed being online has helped a lot of younger Academy members have their voices heard yes. and they are certainly more open to recognizing the work of black and Asian and Hispanic actors. There's, I don't think there's any doubt about it. Well, I think it's because they also recognize the culture that they bring to the acting experience where I can tell you that. I'm pretty sure there's a portion of the Academy that never watched the film because it was a foreign film and we're American. I mean, just literally sure. that is the bias of I never watched it. So I'll vote for this person. Well, every year, I don't know if it's Esquire or Variety. I forget some yeah. publication will run this in the, before the Oscars. Yeah. And they talk to a director. They talk to a producer. They talk to an actor. Yeah. And, uh, and like and a couple other like executives, but anonymously so they can yeah. comment specifically on how they feel about the movies and what was nominated and what should have been nominated. And they'll, they get pretty fucking rough and they'll, you know, they, you can tell the older people because they'll be like, I don't know why I'm supposed to watch these things online. Like, I mean, it's, you know, if I don't see a movie yeah. in the theater, it doesn't count. And you're just like, these are the people voting on this. What the fuck? These guys. Well, and that, some... that is the problem with this whole thing and why it is pointless and yet means something to the people who are nominated. Yes. And, and that's the thing is in, in certainly in recent years, to me, uh, Oscars have kind of lost credibility. I, I, I want to say, yeah. And, and the, their import. Yeah. You know what I mean, because they, they don't get watched nearly enough. They don't, whatever. It's, it's not like it was when, again, when they're everything, like everything, the world has changed. There were five channels and we all watched that, you know what I yes, mean? There was, there was three, absolutely. three networks, an independent channel and a Spanish channel. That was what we had when I was growing up. Um, Regardless. So, so the point is, and I, I, the kind of film that to Leslie is, I, I mean, it, <laughs> you, if you want to, you can say it's a white people film because it's set in Texas. I, I there's, there's one person of color that I can remember certainly in it. Um, and it's a small story. It's, it's, a, it's, yeah. you know, and it's, and it's a, it, it essentially plays out like a real life and, yeah. and, I can see where people would be like, oh, wh how does this get this while well, this this other thing doesn't get viewed? I just, I just feel it's such tremendous disrespect to Andrea Risebrow to say that she was being used as this cudgel to try to keep uh, other people from being nominated. And look, I didn't see Till. I don't know if this woman gave the performance that I'm yeah. hearing. I'm sure it was incredible. You know what I mean? But also, like I just said, Mia Goth never even got fucking mentioned. Yes. And her fucking performance in Pearl should have been, should have been absolutely on the radar. She, I can't even... I don't like I said, I don't want to specifically say what she does. But when you watch it, you'll just be sitting there going, I, I, I said after I walked out, I go, look, man, I, I didn't even know who this woman was. I had no idea who Mia Goth was. And then I watched X and Pearl in a two week span. And I think she's one yeah. of the most talented actors I've ever seen in my life. She's incredible. She's incredible. 
Uh, so yeah, I, I don't, uh, so I anyway. know. <laughs> well, here's the thing though. You can't compare apples to oranges either because you got moved by a story that you were related, that you related to very well for one reason or another. Sure. Till is going to be a story that other people are going to relate to with one way or another and be empowered or impacted by the way that actor portrays a role. Everybody has their connection to something. Nobody is wrong. And when you're comparing apples to oranges to try to give away one award, it's silly. And that's what gets to the inherent problem with these awards. Mm -hmm. Everyone's going to view this art through a different prism. Yes. I told you, I've talked to my friend I, with Pat. I saw the movie X and that's where Mia Goth, that's the first part of Pearl. Yeah. And he hated it. He's like, I don't know what I'm watching here. Yeah. I go, it's, and, and he was the one getting, you know, to bring this full circle. He watched last of us and he goes, why am I watching this? It's every zombie movie ever made. And I go, I go, it's the greatest video game of all time. I go, and also it's just, the, yeah, you have to let the story play out. He's like, yeah, because, but there's a virus and, you know, humanity falls and all these, and I go, yes, but if you, I haven't, we haven't talked at length about it because I usually, when that kind of stuff starts, I'm not going to convince you to watch something if you don't want to watch it. I'm not that guy. What but, I find interesting is he thinks it's just a zombie story. That, But that's, but, but truthfully, I'll watch superhero stuff and I'll just go, well, this is just another fucking guy whose dad died. And getting back to that, Iron Man... <laughs> And Winter Soldier, all of a sudden, Iron Man saw some video, and the Winter Soldier killed Iron Man's dad and his and his mom. And it added this whole element of, like, I don't know if that really happened in the comics, but all of a sudden, I remember being in the theater, and look, I, I loved the Avengers movies, I loved the character of Iron Man, all, all those guys were done very well. But even in the theater, I just went, come on, can anybody have a decent relationship with their parents and still throw a fucking boomerang at a criminal? Could that nope. possibly there? Nope. No. Everyone's still fucking brain fried. Power comes That's from trauma. Ridiculous. Superpower comes from trauma. All right. You got more medicine to grab? What are you doing? You look, I you do. Look. I, um, right. I do, actually. I'm. It's that time I'm turning into a frog. And um, yeah. if there's anything that I haven't talked about, please, folks, tell me and I'll talk about it next week. I can't recall. There were plenty we of things. We have homework, ends. though. If you can watch to Leslie, that would be great. <laughs> I would appreciate it. If you don't, and also if you don't, I totally get it. I, I understand, you know, I because people will tell me to watch shit and I'm just like, I can't watch Ms. Marvel. I don't want to watch a 13-year-old superhero girl. I mean, I, it's, it's not, that's not for me at all. At all. My brain, my brain thought of Mrs. Maisel. I can't like, watch her either. I was like, what? Mrs. Maisel <laughs> is not a superhero. I can't watch, you know, any Ms. I'm out. I can't do it. Uh, all right. Thank you for making me do this. Yeah. You're very nice. I didn't make you do this. I just called you up and I'm... Honestly, I called you up and what did I say to you? I said, I get it if you feel like you don't have anything in you. But if we start to record and nothing happens, we stop. You send an email out and you go, look, this week was a tough week. We don't have a podcast and we'll see you next week. I'm not doing that anymore. I can't do that. Yeah, I have to do but, my work. I have to do. But again, shows. you know, all you did was show up and be brilliant as far as I'm concerned. You're lovely to say so. But this is this is my job. This is yeah. what I do. You can't. And this is what I'm best at. Why would I ever? Yeah. Not. Why would I ever? And not? that's and it's why I'm year. glad we did. Well, that's why Don't I'm we saying have some thank plugs you. Now I got I got like 15 minutes for plugs. Let me sit and listen to all the plugs this week. You're lying. No, that's okay. No. I, I got. No, I want to listen my, to the plugs. Well, then you whole... can just. Then we can just end it, and you can send it out, and it'll be like, woohoo, we're all done for the day. But no, people want, they want me to talk on a whole other chunk. I don't fucking know. You don't want to I don't think, plugs. I well, think you're right, putting too I much will, pressure on yourself. You had a great show. You're you got to get to Twitch. Let's do some plugs. All right. I will just do this plug because it, uh, cause I've stopped doing this, and I don't know why. I've just, <clears throat> it just seems ridiculous to do, but I'm going to do it. Why not? You guys can get me at Mike at MikeSchmidtComedy.com. You guys can be my friend at Facebook.com slash The 40-Year-Old Boy. You can follow me at Twitter.com slash The 40-Year-Old Boy. Uh, you can find me at Instagram, Snapchat, and TikTok at Mike40YOB. That's right. Instagram, Snapchat, and TikTok at Mike40YOB. Now, have I ever done a TikTok? I haven't. As I talked about last week, I need a, I need a prop to do my first ever TikTok. And if I ever find it, then I'll go ahead and do that TikTok. But until then, <laughs> my TikTok will remain barren. It's a barren wasteland. Um, and I'm not going to, I will not literally, I'm not, I'm, plugs take half an hour. You're not going to, you don't have time for that. So we'll, I'll. Do I'll, them in 15. We do it. Let's do it together. I want to hear every plug. But you don't. But I do. But 
I, then I'm still going to do a chunk on my own. And then what am I going to talk about? All right. The then, I'll let you, then I'll let you go. I just figured we've had a really fun time. We've had a great podcast. Let's close it on a high note. You're done for the day. You can head over to Twitch and, and it's good. Did I you am know, so did you... happy from smiling and laughing for the uh, last, you have no idea. I had so a really amazing. shit two days. Well, good. I'm, I'm glad you enjoyed it. Did you know that I'm part of the Misfit Toys co-op? <laughs> what? That, that's true. I am. I'm part of the Misfit Toys co-op. I, uh, <laughs> with other shows, there's other shows. Uh, did you know that No Fun with Jen Kirkman is part of the Misfit Toys co-op? What? It's her solo podcast. She's been doing it for 11 years. She's terrific. Uh, did you know that the Todd Glass show is part of the Misfit Toys co-op? Todd Glass? Seriously? Todd is an unbelievably funny man. He was on a, another podcast last week that I referenced. He's terrific. He's great. And I'm honored to be associated with him. Hey, do you love movies? I do. You know who else loves movies? Ooh. Doug. Doug? Uh, did you know that Doug loves movies is part of the Misfit Toys co-op? I did not know this either. It is. So uh, that's the Todd Glass show. That's no fun with Jen Kirkman. By, and by no means is this, a, uh, is this a full roster. There's all sorts of different shows. But it's no fun with Jen Kirkman. It's the Todd Glass show. It's Doug Loves Movies. Uh, did you know that Never Not Funny is the flagship, I would say, of the Misfit Toys Co-op? Did you know this? Wow. No idea. Uh, that features the gang. That features your Elliot Hochberg, the video wizard. That features your Garen Cockrell, the laptop guy. That features your Matt Belknap, the Mel ba- Belknap, Belknap. Matt Belknap, uh, the hairpiece, and of course the uh, America's <laughs> Hair Dad, our great friend Jimmy Pardo. He is the host of said Never Not Funny. Uh, the four of them comprise the gang. They're always in the studio, sometimes with the guests, sometimes not. An amazing show that you should definitely listen to. Hey, did you know that uh, <laughs> Don't Touch That with Danielle Koenig is part of the Misfit Toys Co-op? I did not. <laughs> it is. This is amazing. I believe, I believe it's Christine Kimmel as her partner. Uh, but they have a show called Don't Cross the Street, There's a Car Coming. I believe that's the name <laughs> of the show. It's it's something, literally something about how to avoid terrible things. So I every week I, I, I conjure it. Like last week it was, ouch, that's hot, I believe was the name <laughs> of it. It's something about danger. Danielle, Danielle loves danger. Danielle and Christine do danger. Perhaps that is the name of the podcast. <laughs> but also part of the Misfit Toys co-op. You should go ahead and dial it up. It's terrific. It's the two of them talking with a guest about how to avoid stepping on punji sticks in Vietnam or something. It's just, it's always, there's always a terrible thing that's happened to somebody and they come in and they tear the scabs off in front of Danielle and Christine. It's wonderful. Uh, so that's part of the Misfit Toys co-op as well. So please go and listen to those shows. By the way, you'll probably hear commercials for the Misfit Toys co-op. Uh, well, uh, maybe well, actually before and end, cause there won't be a break now because there's no break because yeah. we're doing these now. <clears throat> Uh, but I should do those commercials, but then I haven't ever recorded them in two years. <laughs> Cause I was like, what, what can I do for 30 seconds? Like I can't do some 30 second bursts to tell people to listen to this fucking show. I will record one for you. No, you won't. Yes, I will. What the hell? All right. Well do it on a better microphone than you're using right now. <laughs> wow. You heard it. Um, wow. Well, but I will tell you this though. So that, cause in my brain, I'm like, Oh man, for 30 seconds, am I just going to get on and vamp and be like, Hey, it's Mike Schmidt from the 40 year old boy podcast. Do you like podcasts? Yes. Do you like me? You don't. Well, that sucks because unfortunately I do a podcast and I'm the only guy on it, but you should tune it like it, like, and I'm like, you just recorded it. We're going to edit this out and put it up. But for me, I thought that would be funny, but then I'm like, oh, that's just self-indulgent. Nothing. Nobody wants that. But then yesterday I heard Jen Kirkman's ad and she's like, hi, it's Jen Kirkman. I have this, my solo podcast. No fun for Jen Kirkman has been running for 11 seasons. And here's a recent review. Uh, The title is apt. She brings nothing to this. It's such a disappointment. Tried to be something and never made it. So if you like that, you'll like my show. Like, there you go. It was a 20 second thing. And I'm like, well, I could fucking do that. But then I'm like, oh, but then I got to record it. Then I got to fucking mail it to somebody. No, we we got it. We got it. Next week. We're doing it before this. We're, We're recording it right before. You know what I love about that? Next week. God damn. I love that. I love those two's words. Whenever I got anything to do, if you can work the words next week, we got it, a Twitch to do after this. I'm fucking thrilled. Hey, you know what? You know what we're going to do next week? Oh, which means I get six days to not do it. Fan fucking test. <laughs> that is the, that is literally the pinnacle of my creative experience. Hey, you're going to do something next week. Thank you. Oh my God. Do I have to blow you? Like seriously next week. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so that's Misfit Toys Co-op. It has amazing shows. You should check them all out and download them immediately, <laughs> if not sooner. I would get them going. Uh, did you know that we have sponsors of this show? What? 
We do. We have sponsors of this show. Well, one sponsor, truly. Uh, it's our great friend, Fearful Jesuit, and his sidekick, Dana Unicorn. I don't want to say sidekick, co-host, essentially, or uh, his 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 bomb thrower from overseas. I don't know what you want to call her. She's a, a troublemaker. Uh, it's the Paranoid Strain Podcast. That's right. The Paranoid Strain Podcast featuring Fearful Jesuit and the lovely Dana Unicorn. They are doing... Uh, yeoman's work exposing conspiracy <laughs> theories here there and everywhere tearing apart q as we speak right now they are destroying the q movement he just put up a a show where they were like really hammering and getting to the fucking they get you know what they get hammer and tongs and they get to the meat of the matter you know what they do <laughs> they take the conspiracy theory crab leg and they smash it with the mallet of justice and they fucking slide the meat out and eat it right in front of you every week on the Paranoid Strain podcast. You should check it out. It's amazing. Uh, it's available in the iTunes podcast space. It's available, I believe, Amazon, Spotify, wherever you're going to find your finer podcasts. You're going to find our great friend, Fearful Jesuit. You want to write him a note? Write him a note. TheParanoidStrain at gmail.com. TheParanoidStrain at gmail.com. Tell them how great the fucking show is. Or leave a review. Do they do that anymore in the iTunes podcast space? I don't know. But if they do, please do that because it makes them think he's a hitter and he gets bumped up the list there of the spooky ghost podcast category or whatever the fuck <laughs> the thumbing your nose at authority podcast that's what he does god damn it he uh, busts it out on everybody so uh that's our great friend fearful jesuit he is up there with the monks right now masterminding some new content dana unicorn of course putting her dulcet tones to work to tear apart and rip the lid off of all of the terrible things you've heard about in the past and the present that's our great friend fearful jesuit and the paranoid strain podcast available today our great friend David Hernandez also does a podcast. It's called the Flem Cat Podcast. Uh, that's by the way, that's four words: the Flem Cat Podcast. Don't don't try to search Flem Cat is one word. It'll be bad, and you won't. Although, what if you did find one? What if you found another Flem Cat Podcast, but it was one word? So I'm trying to get ahead of him. That'd be fucking terrible. Uh, P H L E G M is how you spell Flem. By the way. It's uh, our friend. He's doing unbelievable work musically. He's doing characters. He's got a guy named Derek. Uh, he sings songs. He tells stories. He talks about fishing and golf, all of the things that a Hispanic guy should only be talking about from the from the, the fucking bleachers. Why would he want to do these white people fucking sports? I don't know, but good for him. And I hope he masters them and he dominates everybody at them. Uh, David Mex Hernandez. And you can go to Facebook.com slash David Mex Hernandez and be his friend. Go through all of his artwork there. Look at all the artwork he's done for us. And he can hire, you can be hired. You want to hire him to do a watercolor? You want to hire him to do an oil painting? You want to hire him to do a macaroni picture? You want to hire him to do a goddamn Rice Krispie sculpture? He can do any and all of those things. <laughs> he is a talented artist and he is waiting to hear from you. Facebook.com slash David Mex Hernandez. Become his friend, send a request, put it on your wall and smile. That's how it works. That's the order. Because I'll tell you what, if you send a request and then you try to be his friend, he wouldn't even see it. If you put it on your wall and smile, I'd question what you were doing because he hasn't created it yet because he hasn't become his friend and sent a request. Please do it in that order. Become his friend. Facebook.com slash David Mex Hernandez. Send a request. Hey, man, paint my balls. And then you'll put it on your wall and be thrilled and happy. Won't you? Of course you will. Because you know what? That should be his slogan. I can even make your balls look good. There you go. That's who he is as an artist. Yes. I can make even your balls look good. Boy, I, w I want to name the show that, but I won't. You should. I'm sure I should. I like that name a lot. Guys, did you know that I'm on Cameo? What? 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 That's right. If you were ever looking for a stranger to tell you he likes you, then please <laughs> send me... Send me $20, and I'm happy to do it. 15 of which go to me, 5 of which go to the creators of Cameo. It's a decent skim. I can't blame them for it. I'm not mad at them and their hustle. Uh, and also, like, man, whatever you need me to do. What is What do we got coming up? I, it's, it's January, as I've talked about. Uh, we've got all sorts of, there's President's Day, I believe, is on the way. Valentine's Day is coming. Oh, guys, Valentine's Day is coming. Listen, I'm going to tell you this, and I'm, I'm going to be serious. Do not hire me to send your sweetie a Valentine, because there's a good chance she leaves you with a suitcase. There's no doubt... <laughs> She packs up her stuff and heads west because clearly whatever I say to her is going to be better than anything you could possibly say to her. And she's going to go, I'll tell you what, that guy has $500 in the bank, but I think I'm going to go and check him out. Why not? That is a dude who's worried about his rent and has to drive strangers around in a beat up Camry. I can't wait to get involved with him. Holy fuck. Does that guy have all used furniture? I need to go ahead and hop a train because I couldn't possibly take a plane out there uh again folks hire me for your cameo i'll tell your aunt she's pretty i'll tell your uncle he's a jerk whatever you want me to do 
I'm happy to get the fifteen dollars, but it's twenty to you. Don't don't think it's just fifteen. Don't try to cheat me out of a fucking Abe Lincoln. Uh, what Wait, is it? you... it's twenty dollars to hire you on on Cameo. It is. Yeah. Oh man. Do you know who Do you know who Corn Kid is? Yeah. It's one hundred and fifty dollars for a Cameo from Corn Kid. Okay, I'm gonna tell you mine is seven ninety nine. Really? I have never sold one, but when I do, I'm done. That's That's it. You're gonna call it a call it a day. Yeah, I, yeah. I'm not. I, look, I'm not burning up the cameo charts. All right, but twenty. Just, twenty seems so. Why is not everyone doing this? I mean, I would just literally hire you right now. Oh, to, I. You're going, you're trying I, to I literally it. want to hire you to do a cameo to send to my friend that says, "I'm no. sorry, your dad died." <clears throat> Lily wanted me to tell you that. Well, I, I, <laughs> I, I can do that. I will. Do I that. would. I love that you're pivoting to where initially you were like twenty dollars is fucking ridiculous. Who would ever give you that? And now no, you're no, 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 like, that is ridiculously low. Oh sure. Why well, uh, twenty dollars to me? And again, Esquire it's awesome. magazine. You can Google this because I love this article. It's one of my favorite articles I've ever read in a magazine. Esquire magazine wrote essentially. A mag- I don't remember the name of the story, but if you Google Esquire twenty dollars, uh, this guy wrote an article and it was like, "What can twenty dollars get me everywhere I go?" Yes. Can I can I give it to a valet? Can I give it to a maitre d? Can I give it to a, a, a you know a, a meter maid? Can I like who? Because as I've always said, a security guard is always just twenty dollars away from being an accomplice. We know yes. I've said this clearly. So that's the thing. Is he wondered what twenty dollars would get him in the modern. And again, this is fifteen years ago. It's a long time ago. But is what it would get him in the modern world? Because twenty dollars seemed to be to him. Because I and I used to do that on planes. If I had a seat and somebody sat next to me and there was a seat empty person there, I'd go. I would either say, look, I'll pay you 20 bucks to switch rows or, hey, I'll pay you 20 bucks if I can take the window seat and you move up because it was just it just seemed like the going rate. Yeah. Now, it's not anymore. Clearly, it's, you know, people are going to want more and more because they all think they're worth more. Um, but it used to be. So that's why the cameo seemed 20 seemed OK. I, I and they, I'm trying to figure out what I can hire you to do right now. <laughs> I, well, I just want to hire you to break bad news to somebody. Why don't you hire something. me to do some promos for this podcast? That'd be fantastic. I might. Go I'm going to send you $20 on a cameo <laughs> to make you record it. I'm going to send you the script. You're absolutely right. I am well, doing that tonight. Sure you are. The problem is with with my cameos, as people will tell you, and it's not really a problem, okay? But it's a problem for me because it's something I do, as you know. But I, why, the reason I didn't want to do these plugs with you, uh, I just, I wind up, like, I think the last one I did was 16 minutes. Like, yeah. I'm not joking. Like, I just talk and I just fucking rampage into the phone and I'm talking and having fun and whatever. And, and then I look down and I'm like, Jesus Christ. And I'm like, and, and so then I'm making, and look, there's nothing wrong with making a dollar a minute. That's 60 bucks an hour. But at the same time, <laughs> it's like nobody, cause I'm, I'm extremely self-indulgent, obviously with this show. I, and I think people really? think I'm funny and care. <laughs> I think people think I'm funny and care about what I have you to say are. sometimes, but not really. I, you, not to that extent. Hiring you for that. They know that they're going to get so much more for that $20. But, I did, okay. I kinda, can we do a contest? Anybody who is willing to do it, hire him to do a cameo right now and make him do something stupid and then we'll play him all. <laughs> oh, Christ. Well, but also I will tell you this, though, because then the problem is I set the standard at like talking forever. And yeah. then if you don't talk forever, because then if you do one and it's five minutes, you're like, Oh man, I got to do another ten minutes. Of I, I'm going to give you a seven minute limit for every cameo from here out. That is like that is like a rule. You cannot go over seven minutes. Where have you been? See, this is the, I said I've, I've said for years I need a handler, and then you went <laughs> off and had your own life. Um, so all right, you so hired Chelsea. So <laughs> hire me. Oh my God, hire me on cameo. Uh, I'll <laughs> and talk. make him do, do dumb stuff. I want to hear it. I've I've look. Believe me, I've. Here's a great cameo story. I one time got hired by somebody and then I did the cameo and this person is like, you are not who we thought you are. Like they thought, cause apparently there's a Mike Schmidt who worked for Johnny, Johnny Nuke. What, what the fuck is the show? Johnny impossible. What are those fucking Nickelodeon? Johnny persons? Neutron. Yeah. Maybe that. No, that's Jimmy Neutron. Jimmy Neutron. Jimmy Neutron. I think, I think there's a Mike Schmidt who worked for that or so did they, a voice. They hired you thinking you were someone else. Yes. They didn't even watch the clip or whatever. So then I did this fucking, you know, I did a fucking thing and it was like, it was something like, my wife loves you, but you know, our softball team needs a pep talk. What some bullshit. So I did it. I talked for like t- fucking 13 minutes and they wrote me back. And this guy's like, I don't know who you are. Like, I didn't, I don't <laughs> know. You're completely not who I wanted, but Jesus Christ, we could not stop laughing. Will you do another one as a, as a, for our softball bag, which so I got hired twice by that guy. Uh, and I was like, great, I'm in. And then I've had people who've paid for me 
and then wrote me a note and said, I, I loved you on Jimmy Neutron, whatever. Please say this to my son, da da da. And I've had to write them back and go, listen to me. I'm not that guy. Um, <laughs> I'm happy to send your money back, whatever. You know, clearly you don't want me to do this. And, and it, people have been very kind. You know, like yeah. they'll either go, well, just keep the money. We'll find the, the guy. Yeah. They've, they've been very nice. Um, I'd love to make a cottage industry of being giving, getting $20 to not be the guy. You know what I mean? That would be fucking perfect. I would, I would make a living off of that. Uh, so anyway, I'm on cameo. Go ahead and hire me. Uh, why not? Right. Why wouldn't you do that? Um, also, do you know, I have a Patreon page. I do. It's got cobwebs all over it, but it's a Patreon page, certainly. And you can go ahead and be a, oh, first of all, let's talk about this. MikeSchmidtComedy.com in the upper right-hand corner, there's a little horn boy. Uh, well, all right, let's pivot. Let's go back to Patreon. If you go to Patreon and become a patron, that's fantastic. Thank you so much for thinking of me and supporting the show. It's super cool. Super cool? Super cool. I'm trying to rush here because Lily's back is about to fucking snap. Um, but also, if you just want to send me money without the Patreon deal, send me a, just to send me a chunk of cash instead of being a monthly deal, um, you can donate for me via PayPal. You can just send me a chunk of money, or you can actually subscribe and send monthly stuff if you want, or at Patreon, you can send monthly stuff too. Uh, is it amazing that I have all of these avenues for you to pay me, and yet I'm still going to be in debtor's prison next week? Is that a... <laughs> Is that a, is that an issue? I don't think so. I think you're going to get a bunch of cameos because people are going to write you to say, "Hey, my uncle so and so died, and I never liked his wife. So could you write a note for me, or could you say this to send her a note that said, I'm really sorry that your husband died, but we never liked you.' I I can do it, and I will do it. I've told people whatever the fuck. I, 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 I that's all matter. I want. I just want to hear yeah. these. Yeah, if your if your uncle died, I'll call. I'll hit on your aunt. Like yeah. I'll call her up and just be like, "Hey, look." You were trapped with that guy for so fucking long. And let me tell you something. I am here and waiting. <laughs> and I am, I am just, it is ridiculous. The lap I have for you to sit on. Oh um, all right. So there you go. So cameo and Patreon and send me money via PayPal. And uh, I just, again, like I said, how great would I, 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 I wonder, I wonder when I'm homeless in February, if I can do this podcast from a public library, will that be you a possibility? Can, can oh, I yeah. plug in and use their thing? And there'd yeah. be, I, a lot, I'm going to get a lot of shh, probably, but we'll see. Uh, <laughs> folks, did you know that I have, uh, in addition to this, which I'm considering a radio station, I also have two <laughs> television stations. I have YouTube.com slash the 40-year-old boy, and that's where you're going to go and find all of the archival shows. There's uh, 13 years of shows ready, willing, and able for you to jam into your naked steaming ears right now on YouTube. Also, really old stand-up. Uh, and I should put up, I think there's one clip of me on Twitch. I should put up a lot more of them. I have a million of them, but I don't do it because why would I ever, uh, youtube.com slash the 40 year old boy, go check it out. It's got all sorts of the archives and stuff like that. And also folks, I have a Twitch channel. Yep. Twitch.tv slash the 40 year old boy. You know who joined us yesterday on the Twitch channel? Who? Amazing Larry. Whoa. Yeah. Do you have something you want to share with everyone? Amazing Larry, uh, a guy on Twitch named amazing Larry leaped into the stream. And he, and he must know me because he's like, hey, it's the former third baseman, which is what I was called on Never Not Funny all the time. <laughs> <clears throat> so obviously, the, ama the amazing Larry knows exactly who I am. Uh, we got a ton of regulars who visit me over there on Twitch. Twitch.tv slash the 40-year-old boy. Twitch.tv slash the 40-year-old boy. Uh, go ahead and check it out. I'm always there. Well, my life is no longer my own, so I can't have set hours. I'm usually there at 4 o'clock in the afternoon on weekdays. And we go till we're done. Yes. And right now we're playing God of War Ragnarok. We finished the main story. Uh, and now we're into side quests and doing a bunch of stuff. Closing up, uh, closing up loose ends. We've closed two realms down. We closed down Svartalheim and we closed down Helheim. But there's still Jotunheim and uh, Alfheim and so many other things to do in so many other realms. Why would you come and join me and Kratos and Atreus slash Loki and Freya and Freyr and a talking head named Mimir? We're all there having so much fun. So go ahead and join me at twitch.tv slash 40 year old boy. I'm actually heading there right now, as a matter of fact. Although, no, if you're listening to this, I'm not heading there right now. I'm, I mean, right now in real time, in I'm real heading time. there. But please don't think that I'm going there right now once you hear this. And especially if you're here. Although, you know what? Fuck it. Go check out the channel. If you hear me say this, go check out the channel because I might be there. Or you can watch one of the many, many clips I refuse to post on YouTube that would only attract viewers. Right? So go ahead and check those out as well, including several clips of me being surprised by a bear. Uh, all right. I think that's your pl your plugs. I think that's everything. Were you okay with that? Or you're, are you're... Yeah, I think that's really good. I have, I have a question for you, though. Do you have an Instagram that you put out when you head over to Twitch so people on Instagram will know that you're live on Twitch? Nope. No. Would I you like one? 
Well, I mean, I have my 40 year old boy, Mike 40 YLB Instagram. Yeah. Uh, I know. I look, I should do a lot more promoting. I should tell people on Twitch. I'm or on Twitter. I'm on Twitch. I should tell people on Instagram and Facebook. I used to, I used to do Twitter and Facebook all the time. Not really all the time, eh, hit or miss, but I would do it. And then I was like, ah, nobody cares about this. So there was no point in telling anybody that they wanted it. You know, who wants to come watch me play? Because right games? now we're recording, but we can't tell people to head over there. But you're about to head over there. So you should put a post out right now that says, hey, I'm about to live stream. Well, I have, a, disc- I have a discord and I'll tell people, hey, I'm about to jump in. We'll do people, that. Okay. But I know, cool. but that's only there's only like, you know, 60 members of the discord or whatever the fuck. So that's 60 more than not hmm. sending something out. Well, no, but I'm saying I should also do yeah. Facebook. I should. I mean, on Twitter, yeah, I got almost 4000 people. So, I mean, and that if one person comes because because it has happened, someone ventured over from Twitter and went, oh, my God, you're funny. And I'm like, good. I'm glad to think so. Uh, <laughs> It's like when people see, because again, it, I have the, in my bio, I have the Saints Row thing and people are like, I, yeah. I, 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 when people see that, they're like, wait a minute, are you the guy from the radio station in Saints Row? I go, one of them. Yeah. And they're like, oh my God. And I, I've, I, t- I don't know if I'm going to say this again. I've said it many times. Uh, did you know that somebody did just a slam cut of all of my radio yeah. stuff from, and put it on YouTube? Yeah. So it's like 25 minutes long. And the best, here's my thing. You don't, you usually don't ever want to find those things because you know that people are going to cook you and you're like, oh, fuck. I don't want to read people. Yeah. Bless you. Hating me. But, uh, but the, the, all of the comments were universally great. Like all these people are like, my God, why did they get rid of these guys for the other games? Oh my, they should have been in the other games. This is my favorite part. Sometimes I would just sit and listen to this radio station. I was like, because again, I <laughs> I did a joke. I, I did this. I did this joke on the, the Saints Row radio station that I, you could never do today. And uh, uh, my partner uh, came on and he started talking about Flag Day. And I said, don't believe in it. Not interested in it. Not, and he's like, how, how can you be against Flag Day? He goes, it, it celebrates us as a nation. It celebrates us as a people. Are you And he says all that. And I go, wait a minute. Did you say Flag Day? <laughs> And he goes, yeah. And I go, oh, okay. Never mind. I'm on board with that. <laughs> um, with the clear implication of what we were doing, and yes. uh, and and but the, but the thing that's really funny is if you go listen to those clips, it just sounds like right wing radio today. Like I mean, literally yeah. the things we were saying then yeah. to be stupid and crazy over the top were are exactly what you're going to get today as talking points. It's ridiculousness. All right. You what is your Twitch kind, channel? Twitch TV slash the 40 year old boy and those are all words except for 40 the four zero slash year old boy the four zero y-o-b are you putting it in your contacts so you know where to no, email i'm making me? you a graphic right now oh my christ what are you doing stop I'm your making nonsense. you a graphic i have a graphic i'm not joking i have a bunch of things i just don't yes I'm but a... do you have this graphic that says i'm going live on on twitch well um I mean, I don't have a graphic for that. I have Twitch graphics. Regardless. All right. So nobody wants to hear this bullshit. We got to end this. No, don't. They don't want to hear you just run away either. Are we Uh, done? Do we have more plugs? No, I've plugged everything I needed to plug pretty much. Um, That didn't take a half hour. You lied. You said it takes a half hour to do, but we you even told a great joke in the middle of that. Because I blazed through them for you. What I usually do. No, no, stop. I I mean, I live within them. I mean, I did essentially what I did, but I also... Look, it doesn't matter. I'm glad you were here. Thank you for having me do the plugs. Uh, but now I feel again. There's that thing inside me that now I feel like I've cheated people out of a segment. Uh, a, you have cheated people out of nothing. I want you to put this up Thursday morning, as is right now, with the final goodbye from both of us right now. And people are going to be thrilled that instead of missing this week, you came in. We did a podcast. It was hilarious, and we both feel really sad for everyone who lost their father as a child. You know what people really love in in podcasting? Pep talks. Oh my God, do they want to hear? It pep was not talks. a pep talk. It was a recap of what happened today. <laughs> All right, you're very nice. I love you. Thank you for joining I me love you and too. helping me. And uh, and we'll see. Well, maybe we'll see you next week. Well, I'll we see won't. the listeners. The listeners, I'll see next week. Let's hope you're around next week. I'll be around. That's not an ominous. Never. I didn't mean it like that. Oh my God! I mean, what do you know? What I hope you're joining. I'm kidding. Hold on. <laughs> uh, well, people banging on your door all hours of the fucking day. Eventually, one That's of them's going to break bad. That was scary. It was scary. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Take care.
there's anything I like more than me It's people who like me I love me, but if you don't love me I love you, cause you know why We both love me, how great am I Let's talk about that for a while And by a while, I mean forever Hi, I'm stand-up comedian and sex symbol Tig Notaro. (laughs) And I'm actor and writer Cheryl Hines. Before Cheryl and I got into the big business of podcasting together, (laughs) we were just simply friends. And we're still friends. But now we talk about a different documentary every week on our podcast, Tig and Cheryl, True Story. We've covered everything from true crime to Britney Spears to my octopus teacher... I'm just laughing because that my octopus teacher was crazy. <laughs> I found it more interesting that his son now had a stepmother and it was an octopus. <laughs> we also, Cheryl, tell stories, go on tangents, and generally make our sides hurt laughing at each other. So whether you love documentaries or just want to hear us slowly lose our minds, check out Tig and Cheryl True Story wherever you get your podcasts. All right, cool. <laughs>